ना चश्मा इज गुड चश्मा तो मैंने भी डाल लिया <laughs> चश्मा तो हमने भी डाल लिया <laughs> तो चक दे फटे पंजाबी कितनी आती है गीता बहुत नहीं आती है पंजाबी तो दिल्ली दिल्ली दी कुड़ी है पंजाबी तो आंधी होगी थोड़ी थोड़ी आंधी आंधी है आंधी है फिर आपा पंजाबी च गल करिए क्यों हाय हाय तुम एम्बेरस करो पंजाब 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 लगाया पंजाब 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 लगाया याद है हमारी लड़ाइयां पंजाब पे होती थी आई चलो तो हम्म अब लाइव हो तो या वी आर वी ऑलरेडी लाइव या या सब लोग हमारी लड़ाइयां देख रहे हैं देखिए सो सो वेलकम गीता टू द 70th मेला ऑफ द यारानाथ वर्चुअल बैटक सीरीज दिस इज बीन क्वाइट अ जर्नी बट the journey i'm about to have is something that is very intimate for me um so thank you for taking time out namaskar um ye matlab milne wala namaskar hota hai ya jaane wala namaskar hota hai aap namaste bhi aisi hai na ke pata nahi lagta ke milne wali hai ke jaane wali hai matlab sat sri akal ji banda kahe pata nahi lagta ke sat sri akal bilan wali hai nahi hai के बिना और कुछ होता ही नहीं है डांस में पहले नमस्कार एंड में फिर से नमस्कार एक्चुअली देयर अ ट्रेडिशन ऑफ डूइंग अ मंगलम इन द बिगिनिंग एंड द मंगलम इन द एंड अच्छा एट द अच्छा मंगलम इन द बिगिनिंग आई कैन अंडरस्टैंड अच्छा देयर वाज अ ट्रेडिशन ऑफ डूइंग द मंगलम इन द बिगिनिंग एंड देन इन मंगलम इन द एंड बिकॉज़ दिस इज एवरीथिंग इज मंगल सो यू नो नाउ द एसोसिएशन इज दैट मंगलम इज इन द एंड It's not true. Yesterday I was hearing actually a, a, a thing to say that this is a mangalam that used to be sung in the beginning. Oh, I see. How was it? 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 How नहीं अभी मुझे याद नहीं है पहला मंगलम क्या होता था अच्छा। लेकिन मंगलम पहले पहले पीस को भी मंगलम कहते थे इस दिन गुरबानी वी डू विद मंगला चरण अभी भी हम गाते हैं इट्स इनवोकेशन ऑफ द परम पुरख परमेश्वर क्योंकि हमारे यहाँ पूजा सिर्फ अकाल की होती है जो परा है ना उसके किसी कर्म नाम की कर्म नाम से याद करते हैं पर उसका कोई ना बुत होता है ना तस्वीर है कोई तस्वुर नहीं है अकाल गुरु गोविंद की एक आई थिंक आपको बड़ा पसंद आएगा वो पहला ही जो छंद है उनके जाप में उसमें वर्णन करते हैं वो ही के चक्र चहन अर वरन जात अर पात नहन जह रूप रंग अर रेख भेख को कह न सकत कह अचल मूरति अनुभव प्रकाश अमतोज कहित जय कोटि इंद्रिंद्राण साहो साहाण गणित जय त्रिभवन महीप सुर नर असुर नेति नेति वण तृण कहत तब सर्व नाम कथ कवन कर्म नाम वर्णत सुमति दिस इज हाउ ई बिगिन्स इज जाप कि उसके सर्व नाम सर्वत्र नाम कौन कह सकता है अपनी सुमति मुताबिक जो कर्म नाम है उसका मैं वर्णन करने लगा हूँ सो दिस हाउ बिगिन्स इज जाप तो हमारे गुरबानी संगीत में शुरू में तो मंगलाचरण होता है आजकल आखिर आजकल तो शुरू में वो भी नहीं करते पर आखिर में तो प्रसाद खाने की लालसा होती है तो हम परमात्मा से ज्यादा गपशप नहीं करते बाद में वी वॉन्ट द प्रसाद द लंगर द फॉर्मैट्स आर ऑल द वे यू चांटेड जस्ट नाउ वी हैव द नटेश 
तुम किटा करता करे दंग के किटा करे कुत्ता ताता 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 क्या बात है formats are uh, in bharatanatyam that is the i think it's a blessing that we have so many diff- different musical formats for dance that um, many of my other colleagues when i sit with them and chat they say tum logo ko kya hai tum logo ko to margam itna laid out hai alarpu hai jatiswaram hai shabdam hai varnam hai padam hai javali hai kautvam hai pushpanjali hai tillana hai tum log ke itne formats hain ki ki tum log ke to you have to only pick and choose you have a whole range of uh, you know already well laid out very sophisticated musical formats so i think that's a blessing and it is also um, a challenge because iske aage kuch karne ka phir kya hi kara karega koi you know mm. it's all so much the great gurus have done and so much has already been done with the uh, the, the musical formats that uh, it's a challenge to actually go beyond this and see how these formats can be taken ahead you know mm. so uh, every as i always say every dance form has its own journey and its own curve and historically where it is placed today each of these forms are placed in a different place and that's why it's very difficult to really compare these forms because they've had journeys of their own they've had histories of their own they've had uh, um i think evolutions which are so interesting so each of them is so different and in their journey each of them is at a different padav that as they say har ek ka different point in time hai so i think bharatanatyam is a very interesting point now where uh, there's so much happening you know because it's one of the oldest styles as you know kathak bharatanatyam and kathagali are one of the few of the oldest styles so i think these styles have seen it all done it all itna kuch ho gaya hai so to to improvise and to take it forward it's a huge challenge and i think uh, uh, that's why there's a lot of restlessness also <laughs> aren't traditions like uh, you know coming from um, uh, in the spectrum that you uh, mapped of course it's the dance uh, map jaise hasta tha ki jaise professor kamlesh dat tripathi haste the hum ikatthe ke we would laugh that kahan shastra likhe gaye ved likhe gaye natya shastra likhe gaye ab wo sirf bhangra aur gidda hota hai Uh, but then you map of course the kathak and the uh, bharatnatyam and kathakali the rest of the spectrum the entire gamut of course we talk we not not to discount the manipuri and others um but seeing it in a very um uh with a pinch of uh, melancholy if i may um my experience of the parampara is having you know punjab scene in 19th century and the early 20th century um it's like an avalanche you know it fills up fills up fills up fills up. it's like an everest you know shikhar ke ved hai shastra hai gurbani hai sufi kaul hai sangeet hai yuddh hai you know um as i was in your one of your articles ht ka interview kiya usme you know the merit uh, the the warfare uh, ke tumne baat ki the 18 days of mahabharat so much to learn is something that you said <laughs> you know it's punjab in habi haryana to bana it's all heart of punjab in that sense it fell you know the evil on all that accumulation crumbled you know uh, how is it uh, and i see that rest of the country was not affected as much by the 18th and the 19th centuries uh, how is it to do with memory now if i may uh, i'm speaking of memory as such the avalanche of memories ke gyan jab accumulate hota hai then koi na koi something happens that it triggers a little single shot even inadvertent noise can uh, noise not music Uh, that that can trigger a downfall, a, a trigger an avalanche, the the crumbling of an entire mountain system, mountain range. 
how is it when bharat natyam and kathakali uh, and kathak when as you mentioned so much has been done then it becomes how do you sustain that much of a memory uh, how are you dealing with that having been a recipient of uh, both geetam vadyam rithim you know you've seen it all i think uh, as uh, kapila ji would always say the double read you know first is the read of tradition from our gurus and we teach it as a reference point and we keep that very sacrosanct and uh, as something that is a gift and uh, we keep that as very very sacred and the other is what you do today with the art form in terms of content in terms of form in terms of uh, contextualizing what you have learned in terms of uh, reaching audiences of today and trying to speak a language that they understand and they can relate to also teaching <clears throat> in a language that the children understand there are two things to this one is you said about how do you deal with this cumulative knowledge that we have and uh, what happens to it the form that you see now of bharatanatyam is really if you speak only about 100 years old so i feel that collapse had already happened i see and, and that is a liberal stretch that's a liberal stretch so the in the 1920s and the 30s when the dance went into a resurrection and went into renaissance and what you see today is that form and in that of course we lost a lot we lost a lot of the content we lost a lot of the form and we lost a lot of the nuance i see you know the the the, the the essence also we lost because when you try to codify a style or when you try to put it box it into a institutionalized teaching or into a, a system then i think it just gets defined in that box you know so i think because i learned from a teacher who was pre this system i realized that so we share uh, our troubled uh, state yeah same yeah yes so i realized that uh, for them it was an ocean mm -hmm. they never saw it as a finished product <laughs> they never saw things as uh, as something that needs to be on stage in a certain format everything was very very fluid and it was life for you them know? they lived it no it, they lived it so uh, a padam would uh, you know every minute a padam would be created and it would be finished and again recreated and finished i mean there was nothing like uh, you know so when somebody says that this is choreographed in so and so year by so and so i mean for me it's it's very strange because uh, uh, this is not what i associate with my art form the way i have learned it or the way i have seen the greats perform and uh, that's the tragedy that today i think uh, is coming to a very formatted dance you know dance has become very formatted dance has become very uh, uh, defined and myopic you know so i feel that sense of vastness that sense of freedom that sense of uh, uh, you know even that in imperfection was with a soul can i call it adventure you know, the idea of adventure and journey so you know unless there is that upaj unless there is that creative outs you know that search for creativity and that search to to fly with the technique um i feel you cannot say that uh, this is art then you're creating performers you're not necessarily creating artists you know so so i think today the aspiration of every youngsters to become a performer you know we made dance in so chota that uh, <clears throat> performance is the only aspiration of many of the young seekers they are not seekers they are learners seeker is a different thing if you seek then i don't think performance can be the only outcome 
you know so i feel this there's so much more in the art that uh, uh, that you need to explore that you need to work on that uh, this little uh, performance really but then this happened i feel you know when we started doing festivals of india when we started doing these mega things outside and we had to put a 30 minute slot and we had to box in a bharatanatyam recital for that so you know we started actually make truncating the programs and making them into capsules and you know that's when we started saying this is not professional you know being professional meant sleek that exact size you know that formatted dancing so i feel that's when the whole thing uh, changed complexion and uh, you had to be a certain way to dance you had to look a certain way you had to dress a certain way um they were not this was not the case earlier earlier you know the the thing was that uh, you could see multiple voices multiple works of various gurus and each had a different flavor each had a different uh, nuanced enunciation of certain aspects of the dance and you went to see that you know and you knew and you expected it and you went to see that but today i find it's the sameness of format it's the sameness of uh, Uh, a certain perfection that is required a certain uh, uh, calisthenic movements and you know instant gratification as you say you see dance for 10 minutes you should be gratified you know you <laughs> so you should feel that um, uh, energy there's no stillness there is no quietude and stillness and quietude doesn't come just like that you know that requires much more uh, i feel internal journey and staying part in one thing to be able to just even if you stand some of the seniors they would just stand on stage perceive that energy you know that perceive that aura perceive that that very intangible i can't even say what it is but here now they roll they jump they they gasp they fall but still i don't get that that feeling of uh, uh you know that feeling of connect connected with the art mm. and to feel moved here mm. you know with the art there have to be moments when you you really jhor ke rakhna chahiye na to wo baat jo hai wo mere liye art mane wo hai ki wo andar se ya to ye kare ya to wo kare kuch kare art nahi to fir kya hai जीवन तो वैसे ही निकल जाएगा सो so, uh, पहले इससे पहले कि मैं आगे बात करूं uh, एक ऐलान ढिंडोरा पिटवा दीजिए घर में कि ये जो वाईफाई कनेक्शन है वो सिर्फ मेरे लिए रिजर्व कर दिया जाए जिसने और कुछ देखना है वो अपने मोबाइल डेटा को इस्तेमाल करें कोई कुछ नहीं देख रहा है और कोई कुछ नहीं देख रहा है <laughs> और मुझे लग रहा है वाई तुम्हारा चोरी हो रहा है डेटा चोरी, चोरी हो रहा है <laughs> <laughs> चोर करे चोरी तो पकड़ा जाए सो so, एक ये बात अच्छा दूसरा टू कम बैक अगेन यू टॉकिंग अबाउट द कमोडिफिकेशन ऑफ ऑफ द आर्ट वन उसमें एक आइटम uh, बना दिया और एक इवेंट होता था इट यूज टू बी इवेंट एक स्वर लगा वुड बी एन इवेंट एक आंख उठी एक इवेंट था एक हरकत हुई एक इवेंट था एक मुद्रा बनी इवेंट होता था कुछ होता था एक बात से अगली एक लहर से अगली लहर आती थी ए वे वुड लीड टू एन अदर आई ऑल्सो सी दैट देर इज द एब्सेंस ऑफ द आइडिया ऑफ जर्नी यू नो आई सी परफॉर्मर्स बट देव नेवर देर कहीं लेके नहीं जाते हैं दे नॉट दे बिल टू ट्रांसपोर्ट मी समवेयर एल्स और विद इन जहां मैं जाना चाहता हूँ तुमने कहा कि अंदर कुछ होना चाहिए और पुराना दिस ओल्ड वन वन ऑफ द सेइंग्स दे वुड यू नो सो मेनी ऑफ यू यू ऑलवेज टॉक कि पहले स्वर में दूसरे में तीसरे में रस आ जाना चाहिए आज तो एक घंटा गुजर जाए नाउ एन आवर गोज बाय टू आवर्स गो बाय थ्री आवर्स गो बाय रस का और आनंद का दिस नो रिलेशनशिप आई मीन इट इज नॉट सपोज टू कम एंड देन दी अदर एस्पेक्ट विच आई वॉन्ट टू 
um, sort of uh, address uh, in, in the idea of change or evolution, not change, but evolution. Uh, thank you for sharing that much has been lost as well. I, uh, from, from the distance, I wouldn't know uh, how much Bharat Natyam has lost because I have not spent the last 35, 40 years looking at Bharat Natyam. I have been busy trying to recover from the ruins of Punjab. So it's very, very revealing for me that you also have seen in the last 100 years much uh, has changed. My issue has been also with the hermeneutic curve, as I call it, from an academic perspective where we rely, when the actual is lost, uh, then people are like in Gurbani, uh, when we look at the exegetical attendance, most people are now interpreting Gurbani uh, and what is the source? Na books written in the 19th or the 20th century. They have lost the link to the original. So they are uh, estimating, interpreting or assuming what it was. So when you, uh, and that's a very sad, uh, you know, uh, sort of reality. Uh, or, or reality of the day when much of what we see is an interpretation, assumption or an estimation most times without a basis, right? And how do, you, how do you see that? Because I think it's very important to try and strive to look at the original one. If, it is, if I may add one more thing. Post-partition, before that, it was a different kind of life. When things changed, this item-based idea, okay, 15 minutes, me gana ho jaye, 30 minutes this, 20 minutes that, oh, you have a 10 minute slot, uh, three hours is there, and so and so dignitary is coming, you only have five minutes or seven minutes. <coughs> Patronage of the state or by institutions stopped going beyond that. They stopped addressing cultural systems rather than the insert and instead they started looking at a cultural performance only i think so there are a lot of things that contribute to this uh, one is the coming of the television i feel the actually changed the way people saw entertainment as we come from a generation where there was no television so you know learning teaching going to a class staying there for four hours spending time, coming back. It was a different way of life. I think come the 90s, you know, and India went through a complete kind of a change how people wanted to entertain themselves, you know. They didn't want to go to the auditorium. Click of a button, suddenly you had about 85 channels beaming at you. And this hit us so badly that that's, I think, one sure landmark that really changed the way audiences were looking at dance or music or theater uh, or films because we in Delhi used to have all night programs you know all night shows were the things that we always were engaged in or if you see the Dashera festival in Patna you know nine ten days of just festivities throughout the night so I think that's when the change started happening. Then there was a steady change and a steady decline in the way the audiences turned out to watch dance or to watch uh, uh, cinema or to watch theater or to watch uh, music or to listen to music. I think that change happened then. So I feel that uh, <clears throat> entertainment started being seen as instant gratification. You know, you needed to, it's like became the dip dip tea uh, generation and the two minute noodle generation where everything had to happen quickly in a very, very uh, professional way and things have to just be, there was no uh, involvement in terms of time, in terms of uh, reposefulness, you know, suddenly it became, life became all about quick fast deliver you know so i think that's when everything started changing i never saw somebody delineating a raga for one hour i never heard carnatic music maybe when that used to be the thing there used to be never a concert without a ragam tanam pallavi all these things slowly started getting out of the only if you had a very very important uh, con uh, you know a kind of a 
conference where there were a lot of musicians coming you wouldn't really sing a ragam tanam pallavi you would sing a one ragam quickly and then finish it off even the formats in music started changing a lot so how could it be that dance could be left behind dance also changed if you see my arangetram which was in 1974 uh, if you see i just saw the program the other day i had i got the program notes are you it are was you, three hours. are you missing the date somewhere 74 i mean was yes, that a long time ago i mean are you was it in 94 1974 darling so 1974 and uh, i saw the pieces and it was something like 3 hours of dancing you know and uh, uh, every possible item that we a piece that we had learnt my teacher made me dance and i was all of 14 so and the audience is never they came to uh, an evening they committed the evening there was no question of leaving halfway going to another event jumping events this all this was just not the kind of lifestyle that was there so i think suddenly everything changed and um, lo and behold in fact i had gone to a program once and um, at, at that time i think this hum log and all had started mm. and suddenly at eight o'clock i saw the the entire auditorium suddenly you know people just going yes. away and you know this is we said wow so you know this is how the change slowly started happening and today if you have a young couple and you ask them how you would spend your you know spare time or how would you like to chill so to speak they would say we'd like to go to the mall and maybe have dinner after that i don't think anybody is going to say maybe i could go and watch a dance program or go and you know listen to a music or a serious theater that's happening i really don't think that is an aspiration anymore of the way the young are seeing uh, themselves because chilling means nothing to think about or experience it has to be like a uh, just a block and delete kind of a thing you know so i just feel that uh, in these circumstances how would you engage an audience and how would you bring back the audience to the auditorium remains a big, very big challenge that's why i think dance has become so restless dance has become so frantic because somehow you want to hold the audience you see so i feel there is a lot of sociological reasons why a certain form is changing or why a certain dancer is dancing the way she is dancing um so if we cannot just blame the dancers it is the environment in which the dance is being practiced today it is a certain peer pressure it's a certain success story that excess succeeded with this formula format dancing so i think this is what i should do which was never the case earlier earlier i think every uh, every dancer saw the dance form as their own and made it their own and always thought as to how would they interpret how would they do it and the big change i see which i think many of the youngsters must understand and see is that i think we were the last generation of dancers who were taught by non performing gurus today we are all performers who are teaching so when you have that shift of performer teacher i think automatically when you see a finished product dancing before you you try to clone you know so you need to be a very very evolved and sensitive teacher to actually see what is best in that student and nurture that particular aspect because if you saw great gurus and you saw four different tiers you know students of these i would even take the name of keta papile for example one of great doyens of dance i have seen four or five very senior dancers who are his students and they all speak different languages they are all his his students so that is what a guru is you know to bring the best of the student and see what is it in the student that needs to be pushed up mm. i was recently talking to humi ben because i i got this fellowship to do 
work on pedag pedagogy, the Tagore Fellowship. So I was talking to Kumi Ben and I was asking her, what's your philosophy? And she said, Gita, my philosophy is only to see what is there in the student and to spark off that. Otherwise, I would not have a Daksha Seth, Aditi Mangaldas, and um, a Rupa Shri, you know, all going different ways, different interpretations of Katha, different way of approaching their art. And they're all from the same teacher. So I think that aspect where the teachers really let the students be and explore, that's not happening today because simply I think uh, perform, performing dancers feel, oh, my legacy, my thing, my, you know, somebody has to do my pieces, my items, my numbers. And, you know, so I think that very small search, um, and they feel very happy when somebody says, oh, she dances exactly like her guru. I think that's the biggest uh, folly, I feel, if somebody had told me that I dance exactly like my guru. I mean, it's nice. I would like to believe that I've taken the philosophy of my teacher, but I would want to be myself. I would want to have a voice in the arts. So I feel there are lots of things due to which change has happened. And I think we have to be conscious of these things. The point is being mindful of these things. Mm. Many of these things we can't change. We can't change the sociology. We can't change the social structures around here. We can't change aspirations of youngsters. But even around this, we can work towards soulful dancing. That's what I believe. Yeah. Now, there was uh, Baba Seva Singh uh, was from the Golden Temple uh, tradition, the Barsa tradition. Uh, these are people who had tens of thousands of compositions and none of his students were taught the same. And yes. they were taught for 20, 30 years. It was not like today, it's four or five years and people are on the stage. And I have another, uh, you know, asterisk asterisk, uh, you know, a mark, a little star on the top. Because the idea of talking of pedagogy, as I wrote in my paper for Routledge, is nearly, uh, you know, um, 201 pages, something like that, a little longish paper. I spoke about the idea of iteration, reiteration, milat hotiti. So there was a process within the parampara when milat was attained, and for that, you had to reiterate knowledge over a number of years. It's like revisiting, uh, reconnecting with the maestro after a few years and coming back. Ji Gurudev, you know, or Guru Ma, this composition is fantastic. I'm looking at it. Or I'm caught here. I'm not able to render this. I've seen you render this. It's not the copy of the maestro. It's an ancient composition. Uska solution name mil raha hai usko arkhan ada kaise karna hai. Now that's one aspect of knowledge. I also see that the content has reduced drastically. And yes. that is why variation is now visible. Because there's not much to iterate and reiterate. That's one issue. Baba Seva Singh was so ruthless. <laughs> they say Pandit Jayadev uh, uh, was, a, uh, was blind, was a Brahmin, uh, and then later on studied with my great grand uncle. So we know many of his tales. But when he was studying with Baba Seva Singh, who was the previous generation than my great grand uncle, the legendary Baba Jwala Singh, he was, he was blind and Baba Seva Singh was blind. <laughs> so but, but the Jaydev Singh is practicing a composition and singing his heart out. He, was outside, he used to play the saranda. He didn't realize, blind, that his maestro, Baba Seva Singh, has, is standing on the door listening to him. So he was let to finish by Baba Seva Singh. The moment he finished, his Baba Seva Singh comes close and used to have a big staff because he used to walk with it. He says, Oye Jaydev, e tenu I didn't teach you this. He says, oh, Ustaj, he was like shocked, like a million watt current ran through him. Oh, Ustaj, Ustaj. He says, I didn't teach you this. He says, Maji, oh, mere guru pahi vade. you know, my elder guru bhai, they were practicing and I just heard it. And I mean, it's such a beautiful composition. He says, Tu suni kyon? 
Why did you even listen? He took the staff and gave him a beating. It's a like legendary beating that happened. It's like 100 plus years back. Knowledge was like that as, as such. I mean, whatever logic they had, he was he was also a known miser versus Baba Vasava Singh, his classmate, who was very difficult to access, but when he taught, he taught his all. So the problem I want to come to is the idea of knowledge is reiteration. Iteration is something which I'm missing out these days where I see the repertoire has uh, dwindled, the idea of repertoire. And if I may just add as a supplement to this, in Guru Granth, for example, there are a few thousand compositions, about 2,500 are with the Raga names. Then there is the Dasambani and Bhai Nandlal's Vars, Sarvlo Granth and other, you know, allied scriptures to do with, which are glued to the, in a way, in addendum to the Guru Granth. Now, when I have analyzed, you know, a, a tradition that goes five and a quarter centuries and more, the original compositions which I once realized and said, articulated that there's a difference between reading a text and singing a text, and then that there's a difference between a composed song and a revealed song. It doesn't seem to be a construct as such. It just arrives. Ineffable. As you said, intangible, ineffable. Who knows where it comes from? We know where it comes from. It's from the within, from the core. But we don't know where it forms, how it comes. Ineffable. You know, the idea of uh, uh, you know, knowing what is a pada which was sung originally. Tikh booj gai gai mil saadh jana pancha lage chor sahaje sukhaino hare gun gavati 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 dar zapyar. How would the guru uh, have touched a note, for example? Tikh booj gai. Trishna Jyoti wa booj gai. It's quenched. My, all my thirst, thirst and desires and aspirations are quenched. How would Guru Arjan have said gai? That my Trishna has booj gai. It's gone. How would he have said Mohan Roop dekha vai? Ab mohe roop, uh, ab, ab mohe need suha vai? Meethi pir hai kahani. Wo jaan kar ke kahani keh rahe na? It is a story. Uh, hari ras, jin har, uh, hari ras, uh, Jaanko ras, hari ras hai ayo, so anaras nahi laptayo. These are words if I sing it, if I hear people sing, but the author, usne hari ras paya hai na, usne kaise kaha tha? So that possibility of how it was being rendered within the three octaves, kaha pe, just even I analyzed, man se vartha, when the, in the ancient compositions, mind is being spoken to within the three octaves differently. A celebrative composition is happening is, com is happening differently. Gyan is coming in the Sanchari aspect. So I am sort of grappling with the idea of newer aspect, newer creations with a strong desire to look and look for the original. If at all I can find the dhuni, that original cha, lay ka vartav kya tha, raak ka, swar ka lagao kya tha. How do you see this? The, the trouble that I am in and the trouble I have watching uh, music, dance, theatre, and so on and so forth. You know, dancers have come up with a very wonderful solution is many of them today don't do traditional compositions. <laughs> That's a fantastic formula. Yes. I'm yes. not taking that yes. formula. Compare or reference in And yesterday, the fact that this is, you know, uh, 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 creativity at its best. <laughs> Because none of them, many of them have not Guru Muk learned Guru Muk the traditional them, yeah. in the traditional way. So they don't have, they have great technique, but they don't have tradition. See, the lineage and tradition has to be learned. That is the core understanding of an artist. That is the reference point. That is the style. That is the wisdom. So there is very good dancing minus reference point, minus that core understanding from a guru. You see, great bodies, great technique. So that they, they do one, uh, suddenly you'll see one Hanuman Chalisa being converted into a Varnam. Suddenly you see something, some poet who is not even a poet being commissioned to write something and that becomes a Varnam. Some traditional four lines are taken and that becomes has, is put into some swara pattern and that becomes another piece. I see. 
so you see many of the pieces the traditional pieces nobody wants to really attempt or do i am seeing this a lot nowadays because i i just feel that don't have the guts to do it and to take on take on the tradition and say this is how i have learned it and this is how i am taking it forward you see that requires a lot you know as you said reinforcement staying in a piece forgetting a piece revisiting the piece after a few years there is this whole process you know there are pieces which i learned when i was just 6 or 7 years old which i still revisit and i go and i see and i see my entire journey in those pieces you know from where i have begun and where i have come my own story is there in those pieces because these pieces have traveled with me for the last 50 years even as, as i speak i'm emotional because these <laughs> are pieces emotional for me too <laughs> yeah because these are pieces which i mean they are not pieces they are just history which yeah. is just been given to us you know and if we don't respect them and if we don't if we are not true to them you know so saying a new thing is very easy i feel where you just take up something but taking the tradition and going deep into it like when i started doing research and i did a piece recently which was on ravana and his magnificence and his other character not his folly but his love for sita and you know when i went to the as you said nobody goes to the traditional original text i went to the original uh, uh, you know ramayana valmiki and what i found was a treasure i didn't know which canto to do because each canto was more beautiful than the other why would i want somebody to write something for me when there's already so much of material that is there unexplored in the tradition you know but for that you need scholarship scholarship chai <laughs> yes and you need uh i feel intellectual engagement you need reading you need dialoguing with people from other disciplines it's not this whole in breeding of you know who can give me which item but to talk to scholars to talk to people who write talk to people who are you know so beautifully engaging and engaging with primary texts so i think that whole tradition of um, uh, you know uh, dialoguing of all artists from different genres different disciplines that's what i find very special which is which nurtures the the brain the soul the heart and this inspires you to do things which are uh, true to the tradition and yet extremely contemporary but dialogue or discourse there are two things which are missing no from from the paradigm today yes shankaracharya discourse, the discourse is gone what was shankaracharya all about he only believed in dialogue you know well so i, I we, wonder when he did it <laughs> we come from a tradition where we have always had scholars challenging each other discussing you know always coming out with uh, uh, you know uh, each others also also i think uh, lauding each others work and appreciating it and uh, you know co traveling this has become so doggy dog and so competitive that you know there's um, vimarshana is important vimarshana is very very important but in those times there was a third d <laughs> debate <laughs> dialogue discourse yeah. debate until recently yeah. there were kacheris you know there would be ghosties no no just no posers it was not a world for posers i think post that in 50 it's become a world of posers that you can pretend to be one sabse pehla abhinay to banda karta hai ki ha ji main ustad ho gaya hu dekho main kitna bada guru hu no but if you want to be uh, a certain way and there is a certain um, uh, you know pathway to become a performer i think everybody wants to be in everybody's good books and just be i think risk taking is very important i think my teachers took risks 
and risks. So I feel risk taking is not there in that generation. They just want to be very safe, playing it very safe, playing it, playing the game as per the, you know, establishment. And uh, so I think risk taking is a huge thing that artists need to understand that at certain points, if you are, if you have the conviction to to do a certain thing, go ahead and do it. You know. Yeah, I think the idea of journey and. Uh, uh, adventure uh, have gone missing. Uh, two yes. elements which I it's miss, and they both curtail. They, they both uh, some are not curtail, but entail uh, the idea of risk, uh, idea of failure. It's about attempting. कि आज मैं अर्जोई करूँगा परमपुरुष परमेश्वर ऐसे हो सकता है या मुझे मालूम है कि आज नहीं सुनेगा मेरी बात पर मैं करूँगा. नहीं मानेगा पर मैं मनाऊँगा. तो ये खत्म हो गया ये खत्म हो गया ये खत्म हो गया अच्छा वो जो छह साल की थी गीता एक जो थी छह साल की वो कैसी थी हाउ वॉज दट लिटल सिक्स ईयर ओल्ड गीता और क्या सीखा था उसने सबसे पहले जो उसे याद है अभी भी यू नो आई है वेरी वेरी structured very disciplined childhood and my mother was like a just such a, a liar complete huh? hand, hands on person you know because uh, she uh, she had no other thing other than my studies my dance my music um and my well being and there were two, two days in a week i had to put oil in my hair and wash my hair and that also with the traditional herbs and other things and i i had a time for everything They're still black must be that work only morning had to be uh, music then i had to go to school come back finish homework quickly run to classes taking me to classes coming back then finding out what i did in the class practicing it so i think it is a very very structured kind of a, uh, so time management came very very early for me in my life and uh, i had a timetable and i had there's no way that i could miss the timetable and i had to kind of stick to it but the point was that i loved it there was nothing imposed or forced on me you know i loved my dance class i loved my music class i loved my school and uh, Uh, so so it so i feel she saw that i liked it and hence she pushed me even more and i had fabulous teachers whether it is music or whether it is dance and uh, <clears throat> i think in music i remember earlier than you know our sargams are very very strong and uh, we had to learn the sargam so my mother used to play it in the veena so that i get the notes right sama ga ma re ga sa re sa ga re ga sa re ga ma re pa ma pa ga ma re ga re ma ga ma re ga ma pa ga da pa da ma pa ga ma ga pa ma pa ga ma pa da ma ni da ni ga da ma pa ma da pa da ma pa da ni pa sa ni sa da ni pa da pa ni da ni pa da ni so sa ba ga ma ni da sa ni sa da ni da sa ni da ba ni ma pa ma da pa ni da ni pa da pa ni da ba ma da ga ma ga pa ma da pa da ma pa ma da pa ma ga pa re ga re ma ga pa ma pa ga ma ga pa ma so you know these things the true notes so she used to play it in the veena for me and then say correct me that you know this is the ma this is this get the tonal quality right and then i had teachers who invested a lot you know ye sab karke we had to sing it in akaram ukaram ikaram you know so that the so you know this is the kind of uh, rigor that one was used to right from the beginning you know that rigor is something that uh, i feel wo bachpan mein ek bar aa jata hai wo rigor to you know i feel so very fortunate that your teachers taught you that rigor then and that stays with you through life then no shortcuts you know and my teacher uh has never in my dance i think whatever i had learned in, in in my initial years she never had one good word in front of me she never used to praise me never ever i think the maximum she would say is agar tum hi galat karogi to bakiyon ka kya hoga that was the ultimate compliment ki maine galti kar di aur unko poochti thi ki tum hi galat kar do ki bakiyon ka kya hoga so that was a big compliment i jump 
come back and say, wow, <laughs> today is great. So never were they, they were pushing, 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 you know. And uh, then uh, I was once teaching, I remember I was teaching a padam to my, to another, you know, we, we, we had to learn our own class and then also teach the next class, mm -hmm. the youngsters. So to stay back and teach. So in the adjacent room, she told, told me, teach her the first few hands of the Padam. And uh, lo and behold, she was coming and listening to the way I was singing the Padam. You know? She listened to it and she called my father who was waiting outside to take me and he said, watch out for this girl. Ah. This is all she said. You know, Concert, huh? I still remember. Concert, huh? So आगे आगे पूरा पूरा मुझे सुनना है So that was when, how old were you? I must have been 9 or 10 but at that you time. you skipped 3 years See, for me. I, I want to meet that 6 year old girl who was yet to be disciplined. <laughs> no, no, I think you know, that's what I'm you saying. You remember something from them? Dance and I remember that, see, basically there, you know, there was no getting away. It has to be adavus, the basic units of dance, which we had to perfect and which we had to learn for a number of years. So first two, three years get spent in the basic uh, uh, foundation the of uh, learning the... foundation the, the, In the sense that the feet positions, beating of the feet, beating of the hands, the stylized, you know, the stylized look, the, the, the shoulder movement, the neck movements, the eye movements, these things are the ones that are taught first in the first few things. And what she insisted on us was a very stylized way of doing it, you know. There has to be, <clears throat> that spine needs to be speaking a certain uh, traditional stylized uh, language, mm -hmm. which is what they insisted on. And so the initial time was always spent on uh, that that uh, quality that uh, the body had to uh, take on and um, work hard to to understand what it was. And then, of course, you went on to the Margam, you had the Alaripu, you had the Jatiswaram, you had the um, uh, Shabdam, the Varnam, and the Padam, the Tilana, and so on and so forth. And it's a continuous learning, <clears throat> and she used to just uh, uh, we used to do sometimes two, three pieces at the same time, you know. It was not as though there was just one piece being taught. She would be a very moody kind of person. So suddenly one day she would say, I don't know what I taught you last time, it doesn't matter now. Let's do something, start off something else. And then she would teach us the Padam and next next class we would go all prepared and say, this is what she taught us, very focused. And then uh, she'd say, Ki, 
uh, now I'm doing this part. I'm just watch, and it be it will be a completely different uh, um, something completely different. So um, then she would say, now I've taught you something yesterday, taught you something today, and now the basket is full. Now it's up to you to you know kind of work it out. So I think this process of filling yourself with rasa, you know. and soaking yourself in it and never seeing as something ki acha ye to do haath kal sikha diya tha ab aage kya aaj kal puchte hai na do haath to do haath yahan ho gaya do haath ho gaya char ho gaya ab aage chalo ye kabhi hota hi nahi tha so you know to just immerse yourself in a certain peace and then uh, so you know first i remember my first program uh, there's this uh, <coughs> varnam that i did and uh, by mistake the musician sang it you know two times more than what was planned in a rehearsal and i just improvised on stage you did so that that my after the program that was one day when my teacher came and said i'm proud of you you did not the, let the audience know that there was something happening you just seamlessly went on and did the did the two extra uh, you know speech and that was all of i think 8 8 or 9 so i think these things uh, uh, what it, it's not my genius or anything it's the strength of the teaching technique the methodology you know because there was no playing of record new recorded music in a certain class or class chal rahi hai recorded music chal raha hai har class mein wo khud baith ke gaati thi jo concert level ki singer thi har class hame baith ke gaati ga ke sikhati thi apne phephde phad phad ke so you know i try very much to do the same today when i teach i i never like to do it to recorded music because recorded music people get set with a certain pace people get set with a certain kind of singing here the musician she used to be singing every day in a different way so we had to adapt the dance had to adapt to her music so you know we understood all those things so early in a class in a learning process that uh, these things didn't later on seem daunting at all and today you see once extra something is sung uh, even senior dancers don't know what to do They just stand freeze gussa you know so ye sab bahut techniques mein bahut farak tha what what is uh, ah shukr hai कुछ तो खास के मुझे मुझे तो आई वाज थिंकिंग दैट यू लाइक टू मी यू लाइक टू एवरीबॉडी के यू आर सिक यू एक्चुअली कोविड मैंने सोचा एक घंटा हो गया या वॉट एवर मिनट से पास बाई एक बार खांसी नहीं गीता मुझे लग रहा है कोई दाल में काला है ये कहीं अभिनय तो नहीं हो रहा है कोविड नाइन्टीन का हाँ कि एक स्पेसिम यू नो स्कॉलरशिप मिली है टेगोर फेलोशिप है कि देखने के लिए कि अगर आर्टिस्ट को बड़ा देश का बीमार हो जाए तो क्या हाल होगा तो मैंने कहा ये कहीं मुझे शक पड़ रहा था अभी अभी राजीव साहिब मैं टेक्स्ट लग, लिखने लगा था उनको कि यार सच्ची पूछी है कि गप मार रही थी लड़की <laughs> आके देख लो घर के बाद बड़ा सा बोर्ड लगा हुआ है <laughs> सरकारों की बात अभी मैं मानता नहीं ज्यादा लिटरली हर एक ने मुखौटा डालना सीखा हुआ आजकल खैर बट हाउ आर यू फीलिंग बिफोर वी गो फॉरवर्ड हाउ इज इट हाउ आई नो दैट आई स्पोक विद यू द अदर डे डेली टू वीक्स बैक आई हैड माय बिकॉज़ एज आई रोड टुडे यू नो इट वाज वेरी डिफिकल्ट फॉर मी आई टुक टाइम टू इवन राइट आई गॉट डिलेड थिंकिंग ऑफ व्हाट टू राइट हाउ टू राइट बट द फियर्स मच मोर देन व्हाट एक्चुअली व्हेन यू एनकाउंटर इट इट्स लाइक अ रेगुलर वायरल फ्लू आई because i didn't have the breathing thing because i was doing two hours of yoga every day in the lockdown even more so i think um, i was saved i i didn't have the breathing uh, issues it was only fever and the loss of smell these were the only two symptoms and uh, chest congestion of course that i understood still- because i think two weeks uh, two weeks or so ago when you picked up my call you didn't smell that it was me So I had I doubts. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> no, my doctor also refused to believe. So the first few days, he thought it was just a regular chest infection, and he treated me to with uh, antibiotics. But then, when I lost my smell, then he better test. I see. So test it, and uh, but I think uh, uh, I'm um, okay. It's just the exhaustion which is still there. I see. Um, 
which uh, hits me every now and then mm-hmm. and i need to go and lie down for a while and uh, recuperate but uh, now i think it's just uh, but i think we need don't need to fear it yes we should take the precautions and see that you don't get it mm-hmm. but if you get it i think uh, uh, you have to just deal with it very sensibly mm-hmm. and just be uh, very uh, very positive about it and uh, take it head on yeah and also you know i appreciated you standing up for uh, even the uh, you know the doctors and medical health me- medical uh, workers you know health sector people because a lot of stigma has been associated at times people have come and so on so so for you to take that lead in that sense has been uh, very moving to see uh, that it's not just about you getting but you 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 uh, taken uh, this opportunity to how people understand that this can act is coming home this is in it, it is in our houses now we are knowing somebody the other day uh, sajan uh, mishra ji sajan bhai was mentioning somebody in his street uh, has gotten it and of course they're all taking care and so on and so forth of each other see when it's a pandemic But, i think you can't really stop it no, i think the yeah. herd, herd immunity has to happen only when everybody mild form mein ho jaye nikal jaye acha hai and uh, stay safe of course i would tell everybody but then also even if you get it it's okay mm. i think you can come out of it and it's not all that bad and manage it you know i think you need to manage it yeah yeah uh, also manjuri manjuri ji is saying i was also yes. doubtful bhai ji she's as brilliant as usual her normal self <laughs> yeah, look at that you had everybody doubting now you're pretending to cuff पहले पहले भी शक था अब तुम्हारी खांसी पे हम सबको शक हो रहा है अब तो पूरी आपकी अपनी फेक रिपोर्ट तुम्हारी फेक रिपोर्ट देखेंगे अब तो पॉजिटिव वाली जब डांस म्यूजिक आ जाता है तो सब कुछ भूल जाते हैं भाई इसके बाद बढ़ जाएंगे दैट्स अ डिफरेंट थिंग बट जब जब इस स्पेस में आते हैं इस स्टूडियो में आते हैं और ठाकुर जी के सामने बैठते हैं तो पता नहीं कहां से एनर्जी आ जाती है that's true that's true how how it is it is very true and uh, dr jussi caruso from brussels uh, she's a top pianist who's worked on uh, phd was on jack chapentier's work on the 72 male kartha ragas uh, she's writing she says i quote very interesting talk in europe we are studying the process of embodying music in cognitive cognitive science this theory has a strong connection with the indian philosophy and way to live music awareness of the connection between mind and body what do you think thank you i like a lot your approach professor chandran and quote i think the you know the whole mind body connect is established in the first uh, act that the dancer does when she goes into a dance class you know the first namaskar that we do we do to mother earth mm-hmm. first bhumi pranam jo hota hai asking for forgiveness because you're going to be stamping on her chest for the next you one hour to two hours whatever it is to kshama yachana pehle karte hain aur fir teen namaskar karte hain hum pehle us uh, param prabhu call it by any name source of energy jo bhi hai fir apne guru ko namaskar karte hain forehead ke aage jo aapko sochne ki aur karne ki vidhi deta hai aur fir teesre mein audience jo sahridayi hai उनको हम सहृदयी मानते हैं नाट्य शास्त्र में कोई ऑडियंस का वर्णन नहीं है सहृदयी है और सहृदयी को वहां तक इस आर्ट फॉर्म के जरिए आप कोशिश करते हैं कि उस स्टेट ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस में आप ले जाएं तो ये पहले जो एक रिचुअल हम करते हैं उसी में एस्टेब्लिश हो जाता है कि जो संगीत नृत्य है वो सिर्फ हाथ पैर चलाने का सिस्टम नहीं है hmm. उसको यहां से लेके वहां तक ले जाना है तो आई थिंक दैट इट्स ट्रू दैट द माइंड बॉडी कनेक्ट इज सो वेल एस्टैब्लिश्ड इन द लर्निंग टीचिंग परफॉर्मिंग ऑफ इंडियन आर्ट्स वेल आई मे ऐड जूसी दैट दिस इज वन अप्रोच आई मीन दिस इज वन वेरी कॉमन अप्रोच बट वी पंजाबीज स्पेशली द सरदार्स हैव अ वेरी स्पेशल अप्रोच if i may we also pray in the beginning that i am about to sing um it is obvious many notes will get mauled over by me many words will be mispronounced by me 
lot of lot of lot of uh, uh, you know mess is going to be created by me and i hold no regrets <laughs> सुना कि नहीं वो क्षमा याचना है ना पहले से क्षमा याचना या क्षमा याचना बट देन वी ऑल्सो अपेंड दैट होल डिस्क्रिप्शन के स्वरों को मैं रोंदूंगा उनको मैं उनका मैं हशर बुरा करूंगा अक्षर जो है उनकी धजिया अर्थ का अनर्थ करूंगा और मुझे जरा भी खेद नहीं होगी परम्परा Um, yeah. What is tradition to you, and what is parampara? Hmm, very difficult question mm. because um, I feel tradition. The definition of tradition keeps changing. It's not one; it keeps evolving. And um, uh, for me, I think my what I learned with my first guru has always been the core. of my understanding of bharatanatyam and that for me is my tradition and my uh, understanding of the edifice of bharatanatyam in that sense so that space is always there of that and i try and um, keep recollecting whenever i even i lie down i try to recollect my guru i try to see how she had done things and that that is very clear in my head and i have no um conflicts as to uh, you know sometimes there is a lot of conflict in the head as to what is tradition for one's self so i think for me that defines that tradition and i am very happy that i got that initial training under her and um, parampara is something that we take forward and parampara is something that how i have journeyed and how i have how truthful i have been to the tradition and i have how i have taken forward and i think i always believe in roots and wings you need your roots but you need to also fly so parampara cannot be something that is only weighed down by tradition it has to be something that is futuristic it has to be a flowing river it has to have you can def- at best define the banks but you have to let the river flow you have to teach your students and then let them journey i don't think uh, there's any other way you take your handful from this river and give it right back and let them journey and take the parampara forward take the tradition forward because every generation has to add that layer their own layer to the parampara to the tradition so i think that's that's what that's how i see it but then uh, you know you evoke the analogy you evoke the idea of the river but the river does not create its own water the water is source the parampara knowledge already comes from the glacier and it's the passage of that so how does uh, that work i mean for me that is the idea of tradition um uh, the glacier so changes the glacier collapses everything is so transient you know well yes what, traditions what, die yes uh, i am worse with the uh, when i woke the idea of punjab for example things have died uh, you know yes. uh, 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 before 47 madan madan mohan malwa everybody went to lahore to study sanskrit and everybody now there's nothing right it's all uh, the the uh, silence of a graveyard in a way i'm worse with that idea but as long as the river is assuming that the glacier is the river is as long as the river is the parampara is and how is the relationship between parampara the sustenance of a river versus siphoning off some resources from the river and using it in a lifetime and is the parampara or the tradition bigger than just one teacher or is it something bigger which gives churns out a teacher or teachers after teach uh, every generation uh several teachers in a generation one after it's, another it's it i think it's in the mind you know it's it's all in the mind so if we 
as far as bharatanatyam is concerned i've never been you you are never in question of the waters i think the waters are always there it's a very very vibrant very rich very sophisticated very evolved dance form there is no questioning that and i think uh, one can say a lot of things uh, you know uh, trying to introspect but the fact is that the tradition and the parampara is being handled i mean we have many more practitioners today than ever before the practitioners are just growing by the minute why because i think the strength of the tradition the strength of the parampara the the, the conviction that people have in the tradition that we have so many practitioners and we've had this debate many times uh, um by even in um, even in sna when we say that there are so many practitioners of a certain form which are so much more than some some of the later uh, forms that have been added we have very few practitioners so you know this this whole this whole uh, community of bharatanatyam is a very vibrant and very very strong community and ne- never are we in doubt of the 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 gushing waters that are there in uh, this particular uh, it's in no in, in no way dearth of talent or uh, of um, scholarship or of teaching i am just talking of uh, when i said or what i when i said that some things we have lost etc that is in the context of a historical way of looking at the dance but today if i were to say i think there are many more practitioners people love what they are doing people do it with complete passion complete dedication it is just that the sense of direction i wish was a little better i take the onus on the gurus because i feel we as gurus need to do much more to give the next generation that little you know um, what should i say uh, that last push and that last thing of excellence and of creativity there's one one more uh, thought if i may just uh, keep at it for a minute for a minute or two more you mentioned about the audience earlier when we were talking about hum log and you know the television soap operas and so on so forth began um, uh, attracting uh, people uh, to themselves versus aud- you know uh, being in the state uh, being in the auditoriums um benefiting qualitatively in that sense rather than just being entertained uh, as as blank uh, cartridges uh, before and after um gurudwaras for example uh, if i may are uh, filled with people bheed hai wahan bahut log hain aur content nahi hai there is no content as such the singing is all gone decades now nearly 70 80 years uh, the, the tradition has become extinct in the golden temple they copy some ghazal music or bollywood songs are being taught number of talas are gone like i mean then you uh, to to come back to the analogy of the river therefore uh, yes the teachers are important yes all of that but then the ganga is near dead i mean bhagirathi alaknanda if we look at it rivers die uh, people uh, who are users and consumers of a river form or a or the content uh that that a stream of knowledge a pedagogical process that provides go i somehow i am also some uh, addressing that idea that in the last many many years um streams of knowledge that were in vogue for centuries and more have not been cared for individuals somehow became bigger than the systems that produced them uh yes because uh, <clears throat> in the lockdown i've been listening to so many different kinds of music and musicians from the archives i mean I, there are names i've never heard and the music is i mean, what should i say outstanding just outstanding and these are names that I've never heard so i think uh, so many people have gone unsung in uh, the the streams of knowledge that we've had and so many disciplines are also vanishing we i don't think we have musicologists i don't think we have dance facilitators we don't have intellectuals who who love dance those synergies which were there earlier which created that 
wow in the arts you know whether it's a jeevan pani who would talk about rasa and you know we would just be like this listening to him you know or saxena ji you know and these are people um actually listening to lectures i stopped sorry to say i mean this is not something that children think are is important today and i think these people were so they were rasics you know they understood sculpture they understood poetry they understood mythology they understood dance they understood movement i mean they were like repositories you know and you know any little doubt you have you could run to them and say you know प्लीज ये मुझे बता दीजिए एंड दिस इट वुड बी वो क्या बताएंगे उसकी से दस और चीजें आपको बता के आपको छोड़ और कंफ्यूज छोड़ देंगे आई मिस दैट आई मिस दैट स्कॉलरशिप समटाइम्स यू नो वे पीपल लव डांस यू हैव स्कॉलर्स बट दे नेसेसरी डोंट नो डांस यू नो दे डोंट नो वेर आई एम कमिंग फ्रॉम सो यू नो दैट आई मिस दैट a lot and i remember with my teacher so many scholars used to come and sit and just watch her teach watch her dance mm. and they used to be just taking in that that whole process you know people don't want to engage in process people want finished products this is the main problem mm. we've spent hours in process so you know i just feel process versus end product this is a debate that is going to go on and on and with more workshops and with more of these online things i think it's only getting more commodified yes best and um, i don't know whether this is healthy because i think the whole thing as you said 20 years of associating with the teacher with the with her philosophy with her journey and journeying the whole thing with her sitting there when she is practicing sitting there when she is creating something she or he is creating something all this is invaluable learning but this is not seen as invaluable learning this is seen as waste of time yeah. very well said the um, the scribe the writer kalam or kala ka jo the, the pen and the art form uh that rishta is cracked uh because i think uh for any parampara to sustain excellence to attain is one aspect to sustain excellence you need some very responsible respondents to that the guardians i call them the guard and we have had me you know we've all had i've had long relationship with people like professor saxena somathi mutatkas and so many others and who encouraged me the idea of discourse and was looking at oh look at this uh, the how the composition mind is being spoken to da 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 i was finding these jewels and some people within my tradition say are stop talking about this just sing just learn it and move on don't waste your time but saxena and sumiti mutatkar both said no 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 this is a very ancient tradition of the idea of ana- analysis of of looking at the uh, rag tal shabad and surati Uh, the mutualism or the you know uh, con- confluence of all of those um i think aren't you pointing towards that that the quality of uh, uh responding to art uh, overall not just dance but we see that lack uh, and then opportunity i think newspapers used to oh, allow okay. space yeah. magazines used to allow space even if there yeah. are outstanding writers but the, where is the space that they write two three things to this one is that you know there are no serious there's no serious writing in the arts anymore because there is of course the excuse is that there is no space because there was a time when hindustan times the whole open page yeah yeah that's how we've learned how to write about the arts we've learned what a book review meant we understood what a film review meant we understood what a uh, music review meant we are rag uh, uh, you know uh, raghav menon yeah. right <laughs> oh yeah so many people good writers so i think you know uh, that was a time when uh, you know people before a program came and told us oh there are five critics sitting yes. in a row <laughs> you know backstage watch out you know <laughs> so, so we knew that you know five critics were sitting all of them and you know by by next morning you had the reviews in almost all the papers so 
so i think um, um, some were very knowledgeable even them some were not so knowledgeable but were very encouraging and they used to write so i think there were different kinds of people some came and gave you feedback personally and said uh, i think this kind of a thing could have been done better this way and uh, after the program a lot of dialogue people would come and tell you from different uh, you know uh, uh, spaces so i think that is completely finished today yeah, yeah. and you don't have um, uh, you know that, that i feel bad that you don't have discerning people yeah. giving you advice look at saxena uh, for example <laughs> i i was reminded i'm reminded of uh, the idea when sk saxena write a whole page review and pandit ravi shankar had yes. just come back after the whole beatles and all that stuff in the west uh, becoming a star there and and he was playing at uh, i think fiki and uh, and saxena sitting with a stopwatch <laughs> writing yes. it's a minute pay it is minute at the second this note wasn't didn't belong to the raga he was playing or uh, and then he read the next day then he was playing at the kamani or whatever auditorium and he tuned and everything and he says before he started saxena baithe hain yahan <laughs> and then SK Saxena stands up and says ha bhaiya baitha hu <laughs> and Saxena would say it was one of the most extraordinary performances that Pandit Ravi Shankar did the next day so there was a dialogue between the scribe and the scribed <laughs> we, we had subhru ji you know uh, who was to write for the statesman and um, the wo hall mein aa jate the to halchal mat jati thi कि भाई सुबड़ आ गए सुबड़ आ गए सुबड़ आ गए सो यू नो दो डेज वेन या आई मीन आई फील बैड फॉर दीज यंगस्टर्स दैट दे डोंट हैव दैट एनवायरमेंट विच वॉज देयर एट एंड नॉट ओनली जस्ट द पीपल हु रोट दे वर यू नो एटलीस्ट फोर्टी और फिफ्टी रसिकस हु हैड विजुअल वो कैबुलरी दे हैड सीन सो मच डांस that they would they would just in love with dance yeah. they would just come to watch you dance you know and they would say oh this piece you know i have seen uh, bala madu i have seen padu akka do this piece how nice today i relive the piece through you you know that visual memory you know of watching a certain piece and then again watching it again done by another person from another generation and then to be to feel humbled by that experience yeah. i think that love for the arts you know with no stakes yeah. at least critics yeah. have a stake very that they need yeah. right you know but these were just rasikas who just came and, and they were not wealthy they made an effort they took a, a public transport and came and watched a show and spoke about it and went back i mean that kind of simple audience that you had in delhi and you know that i really miss that you know which is sad so uh, coming to the idea of performance how many patras have you danced in dance you know in bharatanatyam we don't have patras we play in one evening we could have paid 50 patras okay because okay. suddenly you are sita suddenly you are ram you are suddenly ravana you suddenly are the yachaka so you know multiple roles are played that is the beauty that was my the, point yeah so yeah. how many how many times geeta transforms into them and how many times have they transformed and entered into the geeta when she comes back home uh you know my teacher used to be very clear that uh, the whole process of getting ready for dance and the whole that whole one hour or one and a half hours you take you look at yourself there in the mirror is a process of just erasing geeta chandra and just transforming into a yachaka on stage you know so there is no confusion in the head once you stand there this is there has to be that that offering through your body it has to be complete and 100% of offering nothing else audience don't matter musicians don't matter nothing matters it is your connect and your 
dialogue with the Supreme. And this was, you know, further reinforced when um, a very senior dancer, uh, <clears throat> you must be knowing Ashish Koker's mother, you know, Saroja, uh, yeah. Saroja, Saroja Koker. She got the award here or the, she got the fellowship, one of the two. And, uh, you know, Ashish told me, please tell her not to wear all this gorgeous, you know, this, this, all this and all that. So that. Just simply, simply wear a sari and go because, you know, for her age, it doesn't, uh, it's, it doesn't refit. And it's not required. She's only going to do padams. And I was doing the natu <clears throat> And uh, so she said, only you can go and say, tum ja ke bolo, main ja ke bolta, main maar So then I went to the house and said, what are you going to wear? And, you know, and she, she said, costume, of course, and all this jewelry I'm going to wear. So I said, uh, Akka, but it's only a Padam evening, you know, it's okay. And, you know, um, there'll be documentation and all that. So uh, simply up uh, as a, you know, be comfortable. She said, kya comfortable? Had Dance karungi to main ye sab pahen ke karungi. I have to get into character. This is my meditation before going on stage. Mujhe ye tayari karni hai. Aur main karungi. Tab jaungi. Nahi to main dance karna hai. So, you know, everybody has their own way of how they discard themselves and enter into that most fabulous mm -hmm. stage. And I think I'm missing it more ever than ever before now with the lockdown. That's exactly why I'm here. So what Yachika are you going to transform into today for us? And we are we want to see you and we want to learn we want to see you trans we we want the Gita children to just go away somewhere in the clouds and Yachika to come so Kwansi Yachika are here in front of us but you have said that you have to do a to do a shringari no no shringari will go to Abhinay slowly slowly Yachika will be gap shab I am going to have my Akhmataka with the Yachika is it some, nothing that you've recorded? Some recording, maybe something you can do now. Uh, something, something, please, please, please. See, there is this uh, piece, of course, uh, because you said Stringara, I had kept that piece ready. Fantastic. This was, part, this was just, uh, I just thought it's a very traditional piece and a lot of North Indians are also there, so they would understand it easily. Are they, this is from, it is not just for the North Indians. North, who are North Indians? I don't know them. Achha? No, no, no. <laughs> the, the eternal snobs, you mean? Like me or what? You know, the supremacists, you mean? I mean, what? I don't know them, actually. <laughs> so then I'll... Uh, that would be great. Do... Yeah, the Shrigar would be great. Shingar would be great. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I uh, really, that's the focus that I'm having. It's the idea of transformation because then, you know, uh, Baba Sheikh Farid evokes the idea of Suhagan, uh, the Shringar. Uh, Bhagat Kabir evokes the idea of Suhagan. Um, yes. He sings, Gao Gauri Dulhani Mangal Chara More Grah Ay Raja Raham Batara. And but you to sing something and we were supposed to do that uh, we will also do that we will i'll sing some towards the end after the time is over maybe <laughs> okay this is well um so part of a production uh -huh. so but i'm doing it uh, today as with the idea of shringara with the idea of readying oneself yeah. to be accepted by the nayaka wow. it will be nayaka it could be Krishna, mm -hmm. it could be anything. I see. It could be many things. Mm -hmm. So, so this is a, basically an experiment between Carnatic music and Hindustani music, I where see. both took the raga of Yaman, mm -hmm. and it's been sung in the format of a tanam initially, and then of course you go into the uh, very traditional composition, Piya uh, Nazariya. I see. Jaga. Uh -huh. Of course, the, the, the Hindustani thing is sung by Venkateshwaran, who's been singing with me for a long time, and the 
the other one is uh, uh, the, the Hindustani part is sung by um, Ojesh Pratap Singh. I see. And which is the oldest uh, text that talks of uh, the Sringar? Uh, um, and is the Sringar uh, in dance? Because of course, you know, looking at the mystical path, the idea of the Suhagan is evoked. But of course, in the dance form, you're looking at any, uh, you know, any Patra, you, many, many Patras. You could be from um, from a dant, uh, from a from a demon incarnation to a godly incarnation, to a friend of a godly incarnation. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can I have the volume a little bit higher? This is good. No, it can be louder. Okay. And and the computer can be a little further. And a bit to the rotated to the right. Can you hear me also? Could you hear me? Yes, a minute. Yes, it is, yeah. Can we have it further away, the computer, Gita? The computer needs to go further away. This is good, yeah.
Chakate Pateji. <laughs> that was a crash land, isn't it? <laughs> to, to snap you out of that. To snap you out of that. Back to Punjab. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow, that was that was fantastic. But ये तो नकली श्रृंगार था ना मुझे तो असली देखना था कोई कैसे बनते हो मतलब जब मैं कहते खाना खान आया ਤੇ ਬਨੂ ਉਹ ਸਬਜੀ ਬੜੀ ਚੰਗੀ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਆਹ ਆਹ ਦਾਲ ਬੜੀ ਸਵਾਦ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਪਰਾਂਠੇ ਤਾਂ ਕਮਾਲ ਦੇ ਖਾਦੇ ਸੀ ਮੈਂ ਬਟ ਦੈਨ ਖਿਲਾਇਆ ਮੇਰੇ ਕੋ ਨਹੀਂ ਕੁਝ ਐਸੇ ਲੱਗ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਸਭ ਕੁਝ ਇੱਕ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਹੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਨਾ ਆਏ ਹਾਏ ਨੋ ਦੈਟ ਇਸ ਟਰੂ ਆਏ ਦੈਟ ਇਸ ਦੈਟ ਇਸ ਫਾਈਨ ਆਏ ਆਏ ਹੈਵ ਟੂ ਟੇਕ ਦੈਟ ਆਈ ਵਿਲ ਟੇਕ ਦੈਟ ਬਟ ਥਿਸ ਵਾਸ ਫਿਨ ਸੋ ਟੈਲ ਮੀ ਹਾਊ ਇਸ ਦ ਟੈਲ ਅਸ ਇਨ ਯੂ ਨੋ ਟੇਕ ਅਸ ਇਨਸਾਈਡ ਯੋਰ ਯੂ ਨੋ behind your eyes uh, and your ears your hearing you are you having an oral experience and then you are perceiving it and then you are responding to it uh, how is how does that work for us as non initiates um, how do we I, get introduced to that idea i don't think it's rocket science simply because not for I you think, uh, if you see if if you say this this is obviously seeing mm-hmm. and anybody who so the the eye coming close hand coming close to the eyes and seeing or just seeing i don't think uh, it requires so much of an initiation as uh, people make it out to be i think you just have to involve with the heart because i find that when we go to dance to an international audience with a little bit of explanation how well they are able to enter into a piece they don't know the story they don't know the mythology but they catch the gist they catch the soul of the piece you know so i think it's not about understanding the hand gestures or understanding the language or understanding it's 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 just flowing with the artist you know and as we say the sahridayi you know the 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 way you kind of engage with the artist if you sit with the idea that i need to be told i need to be spoon fed mm. then i think uh, you know the arts are not uh, your cup of tea mm. that i would say because i think when you sit you don't listen to a, a musician you engage with the musician you know you travel with his music and in dance you have to be traveling with the dancer you know i mean you have to be you have to engage with the music the lyric the rhythm the the movements the entire uh, uh, you know uh, works of the dancer that she offers so i think it's an experience you experience a dance performance i feel is more like you go and watch a dance performance you don't watch it. you can't watch a dance 
it's not a, a slapstick humor theater that you go and watch or something that you can and if people want participation in it today many people say oh we love things where we can participate i don't think the classical arts are like that they are a different genre and they have that 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 thing of a little seriousness to it call it elitist i don't know There's so much dialogue about arts being elitist it's not elitist i think it's a question of acquiring a taste for it you need to repeatedly view something see something and you get completely absorbed in it you know so i just feel that you have to give yourself some time that's why when we go to spick mckay programs i always say that uh, you know you you don't go by your friend seeing a film and saying it's nice or not said, I, i'll see it and then i'll let you know whether i like it or not it's the same thing with the arts you have to engage with it you have to see it for yourself it's always the case when we go for a program to speak make initially the children oh god another another woman has come i know what she's going to say this is the attitude when they come and sit in a school and towards the end of it they just don't want us to stop they just don't want us to go away from the school they want to talk to us they want to see what is goes on behind this whole thing what is, they want to know more so i think there is this need we have failed as uh, educators we have not given that basic understanding of the arts in schools because of which you see at least three or four generations completely removed from what india stands for and what its traditions are i don't want everybody to become a dancer but i want them to be at least knowing what are these forms and identifying the forms and being able to at least sit through a program and be proud about the fact that india has so many beautiful things to offer i mean this basic thing we cannot do in our schools i think we can wind up shop hmm. well there But are yeah sitting in schools is ridiculous yeah it's tokenism hmm. it's not teaching appreciation of the arts because that's what we need in that one one period in a week you can't create uh, uh, balam bala saraswatis and bhims and joshis you can't do it what you can do is create an appreciation for the arts and a holistic appreciation of sculpture of music of dance of theater of painting of everything it's not it's so myopic there's a kathak dancer she knows only kathak and she'll be doing tate 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 till the bab child is so bored so and we create a gender divide there dances for girls boys will go for sports at that time i mean these are the kind don't you think arts is for everybody and arts appreciation should be for everybody uh, in the school and it has to be almost mandatory to do mm, yeah uh, there are two aspects that you are uh, in a way your narrative refers to uh, <laughs> given the times uh, covid 19 there's no vaccination there's no medicine and suddenly uh, we find that the world is not at all uh, you know worse with the idea of developing a vaccine they say hame aaj chahiye vaccine kahan hai kab hai then they are learning that you know what vaccine takes 18 minimum 18 months to develop medicine after that medicine we don't know when how do we, we don't know we are still you know one company when i was reporting uh, doing my monologues on the covid 19 i did about 46 of them from the protein there's a spike there are five spots an italian company in oxford or whatever some some university have found uh, f- five different strains from the stra- s- same protein which covid-19 uses uh, they've done it's a long process appreciation dies because they're not worse with the idea of art ke artist banta kaise how does an artist come to be what is an art what is it to be a uh, a sahridai uh, you know a rasika uh, guru nanak sings aap pe rasiya aap ras aar var var gavar रस आपे रावण हारा 
कि अपने आप रसिया है वो परम पुरुष परमेश्वरा अपने आप ही वो रस है अपने आप ही वो रावण हारा उसको चखने वाला है द प्रोसेस हैज बीन फ्रोगॉटन एंड दी आई माई आइडिया वॉट ऑफ ऑफ बींग इन कॉन्वर्सेशन विद यू और यू नो इज टू सो दैट वी ऑल कैन अंडरस्टैंड हाउ मेनी ईयर्स डज इट टेक वॉट इज द आइडिया ऑफ अ ट्रेडिशन हाउ डज अ नॉलेज सिस्टम survive as my grandma would say son do not forget the journey this knowledge is taken before it is reached you it has come through the greatest of the battles your ancestors fought one hand you know a bloody khanda the shield in the other uh, not even the saddles anymore you know the great war is their saddle is the greatest you know their extension horses can change but not the saddle bloody feet but at the back the saranda endowed by guru amar das and a pothi this journey is bibi sant kaur born 1900 that is what the point is that the reason why we don't see we have people attracted to a television soap opera or the youth i see the problem with the previous generation with our generation how far away we were in our times that we've not been able to uh, you know impart or pass on that the idea of qadar vidya ki qadar ho fir vidya ka dharak मिलता है या उससे संवाद पैदा होता है बेरर ऑफ नॉलेज एप्रिसिएशन पहले हो बेरर ऑफ नॉलेज से डायलॉग शुरू होता है एंड देन देर इज ए चांस दैट वन बिकम्स ए विद्याधर हिमसेल्फ और हर सेल्फ एंड वी आर इमीडिएटली अरे दवाई का है वी नीड अ वैक्सीन नाउ वी नीड अ टैबलेट नाउ वी फोर गेट द आइडिया येस वी डोंट हैव टू वेन आई टेक द वैक्सीन टू मोरो और द मेडिकेशन आई डोंट नीड टू नो हाउ मेनी सॉल्ट एज ए कंज्यूमर but when an ad, when when uh, problem when when trouble comes calling i think our lack of education uh, you know is exposed and we see how much damage we do un, you know inadvertently to end my uh, and before you respond guru tej bahadur ki ek composition hai badi adbhut hai ke bahoshi mein kiya paap hosh mein kiya paap to har gyan address karta hai advertently you know knowingly done uh, consciously done sin but he says i re ma pa da pa re sa na re a chit pa pa te dar re dar re पाप ते डर रे नर अचेत पाप ते डर रे सो नर अचेत पाप ते डर सो आई थिंक एक्सेलेंस इज लॉस्ट नॉलेज स्ट्रीम्स आर लॉस्ट नेचर एयर वाटर अर्थ फॉरेस्ट्स आर लॉस्ट व्हेन वी आर committing sins inadvertently unknowingly when we when we uh, tra- transgress or trespass uh it's wonderful to listen to you because i was just kind of thinking of various things uh you know nostalgia is wonderful because i have a daughter also who is uh, trying to negotiate in these difficult times and uh, i think talking too much of what is lost and you know what is gone is one thing but how do we kind of handle today and how do we bring in hope and how do we have that fire in the belly as an artist you know that i think is also very important to me because i have a huge constituency in my students and when initially i thought i will not do classes i thought i was doing a big disservice because i i was totally against teaching online because i'd never done it i was a very one to one person i needed the class i needed my environment i needed my students in person but i realized that everybody was going a downward spiral you know this lockdown was hitting people in very very different ways and it was very painful to see it and i realized that one way i could do it is through my reaching out to my students through online teaching and i felt so happy that first i think two months when before i i was uh, laid up because of uh, the illness i think it was my best period because i was every day was sitting in you know to teach and i would something 
spectacular would come out and i would share and some new way of teaching would come out because this was a challenge for me i was pushing myself i was reading i was trying to see what is this medium i have to crack it and i have to see what best can go down through this medium and how i can keep the children engaged and i must say my students were a happy lot they were happier in fact i i almost feared the fact that they might not come back to real class because we we had such a i, I mean i think i think my own maybe apni nazar lag gayi jiske wajah se main bimar ho gayi we were so happy together in the in this virtual class and we were discussing almost everything and trying to do things which we'd never done in class and um, learning so many different things and engaging with every single of my students so i think uh, life gives opportunities i think we have to see that and we have to understand that change is the only constant and uh, it is inevitable we can't turn the wheel back and we can't say we need to go back so i think given what we have we have a lot we still have resource people we still have a lot of wonderful things happening around some of the youngsters are doing phenomenal work they might not be mainstream but they are quietly doing their work i reach out to those artists i talk to them i learn so much from the youngsters there are people who are completely immersed in what they are doing i mean they might not be known to the mainstream people but then there are lots of young dancers doing spectacular work and i reach out to them and as as somebody who's also a presenter as somebody who curates a festival i keep my eyes and ears open and we've had always people who are doing serious work in our festival and um, <clears throat> of course i have a little problem when you celebrate them when they are very young because this was an ongoing debate even in sna yeah. you remember yeah. we increase the young 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 yeah. uh, artist age to, to 40, 40 yeah. yeah yes because i feel that arts at 40 you are nothing <laughs> you know you're still kind of figuring it out for yourself at least i didn't get anything till i was 40 yeah i was just waiting yeah. in the wings i had i had no tours i had no performances but everything happened much later yeah. so i feel the gestation period what you were talking about that incubation period is very very long in the arts and that staying power and sustenance i see the ones today who were recognized very young are feeling completely disillusioned yeah. i'm sorry to say they have nothing more to do in their lives they've seen it all done it all so i think recognition coming very soon can be a great great um uh problem yeah you know it's a boon so, in very rare cases it's a pain it's a pain because people have seen you you've done all homes all the festivals you don't get called back to those festivals then you don't know what to do with yourself how creative can you be you can't be creative every day you need to have phases when you just kind of you know do something completely different and then come back you know you need to feel but then they feel there's some kind of a race happening and if they go away they they might just kind of be forgotten if this is the level of insecurity people have i think uh, you know the, so i think the older thing where balama i don't have no see balama i see all her recordings in her 40s and 50s and that was her peak you know so i just feel that this whole thing of young 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 it's wonderful it's nice but i think then you need to also have great mentors to give them that sense of direction you know where do they go from there and they don't reach out to mentors they feel they know it all so you know there is this uh, arts have a very different uh, you know life span you know so to say that the, the shelf life is very small jaldi jaldi karo jaldi jaldi karo ab jaldi jaldi mein nahi hota hai na jaldi jaldi mein there are certain things that don't happen overnight you know so uh, so you be, or we all begin as pretty dancers want to look pretty on stage and then slowly we realize oh this is the most frivolous thing this is not what we we got we want to do <laughs> where is the art i want to catch that i want to get to the soul of it and that process is not easy it needs mentors it needs people around you who can constantly be inspiring you and showing you the mirror and saying this works this doesn't work and this needs to 
you know kind of taken to a different level so this constant dialogue is very 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 important you see the uh, my uh, i want to go back to uh, something that you mentioned in the earlier part of your narration uh, i'm i'm not someone who cries over spilt milk but i take lessons from it and a civilization or a community or a nation which doesn't learn from the spilling of milk the very people will continue to make mistakes so when we talk, when i attend to the idea of tradition it is and the losses incurred i have studied i have seen with great you know attention or i have looked at it very very carefully the losses incurred in north 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 of the south asian idea in the last 160 70 years who were the kind of people who created sustained knowledge who were the people uh, a civilization churns for 5 600 years and then it produces a jewel like a payar singh taranga or maharaj thakur singh who chooses to live getting fed up for 48 years in anonymity nothing wanting to have to do and so many other elders we have seen across the country uh, and uh, during as any times we were always discovering things like that my uh, attendance to to the idea of losses is only as much is to draw lessons because there are certain aspects which have taken hundreds if not thousands of years to evolve and it's like a species going extinct that is where i'm attending to the idea of tradition uh without that i mean what would a fish do if i'm a fish yes as a contemporary musician or an attendee of knowledge but if there's no water what i'm going to do dance on the rock bed without water uh, or as bhagat namdev ki baat yaad aa rahi hai kehte hain koi bole nirva i'm just extrapolating that one part koi bole nirva koi bole dur jal ki machli chara khajur जल की मछली खजूर चल रही है कहे अरे परमात्मा बहुत नजदीक है अरे अरे नहीं बहुत दूर है कहने की बोथ ऑफ देम आर लाइक अ मछली ट्राइंग टू ईट ट्राइंग टू टेल द टेस्ट ऑफ द खजूर व्हिच इज ऑन टॉप ऑफ द खजूर दैट इज वेयर माय अटेंडेंस इज इट्स नॉट अबाउट क्राइंग और द थिंग्स डोंट डाई थिंग्स डाई इन द हैंड्स ऑफ स्टूपिड पीपल थिंग्स डाई इन द हैंड्स ऑफ इररिस्पोंसिबल पीपल थिंग्स डाई आई एम रिमाइंडेड ऑफ सक्सेना साहब टेलिंग मी अबाउट उस्ताद अल बदर रहीमुद्दीन खान one day he was saying a uh, young you know, we talking about the 50s young big names who became much bigger legends later like bade gulam ali khan ustad amir khan that time they were young in their 20s at the time the new voices he was asked about his own nephews and others and he said to a few about a few ke ha ha awaze bahut achhi hain they wonderful voices par zimmewar gawaiye nahi hain no for me i zimmewar gawaiye nahi hain they are not responsible attendees of knowledge or the form now for me and means xena we would talk about the idea not about who was labeled that's not important who was being who got the certificate no but the idea of what is it to be a responsible attendee of knowledge that is where the point is my grand uncle want to append one more anecdote before you uh, share your thoughts on that you know i i was interviewing him in 2000 many times he had said but i had the cameras this time on a lake in in bridgewater and i asked him pitaji uh, you created you and your brother created bhai avtar bhai gurcharan your own group your own jatha in 1940 you know 6 and that your dad the legendary baba jawala singh was not very glad what was it like and he said that beta jado tusi sikhan joge hoyo tusi ad ho gayo you know the moment you have now reached become of age to learn you have created your own group so he passed away in 52 and he said that in 46 so my question to them was uh, what was it that was yet to be learned and was the was it done in the next in the last 6 years that the grand maestro lived so my attendance is towards that uh, i think this <clears throat> this generation is very diligent no doubt about it they are uh, very sharp but this this whole this whole thing of being in a hurry is definitely there you know that is that is i think what is creating a bit of a problem where everything wants to be 
uh, achieved quickly and it has to be concised into a capsule format so that you can just swallow it and you can become x v z you know so that and we are making it we are also responsible you have very very senior people uh, doing workshops and saying this is it and saying 10 din mein ye ho jayega 15 din mein 3 din mein ho jayega 3 din mein ye aap learn kar lo to hum hum logo mein bhi to galti hai ki bhai aise aap kitne senior senior guru chale jate hain workshops ke liye 2 din ke liye kahi chale ja rahe hain 3 din i wonder why can't the gurus just stay in their own houses and whoever wants to come yeah. has to seek the guru and run why are the gurus going to all these places and you know making themselves so liberal i think we ourselves devalue our own art and ourselves if we do that then i think we don't have anybody else to blame Thanks. when it comes to um, you know uh, trivializing uh, trivializing the arts see arts get trivialized very often uh, and so that's very why easily very easily in schools if you see the most dispensable thing will be the arts the in, in a government setup the first thing to be axed will be the arts yeah. the, the money for the arts so this is a very very absolutely very very fragile uh, kind of uh, situation so i feel that uh, um, we all need to really think and see how we can you know kind of bring sense into policy makers into educationist into gurus into teachers to become as you said responsible and to treat the arts as not something that is also ran but a must run or dispensable assets of a nation they're not they're indispensable assets and they shape the idea of whether they are engineers doctors uh, i'm an ex pilot you know uh, soldiers uh, business people if they have had training imagine the kind of attendance they would bring to the desks they they would responsibly hold in in the future sure. and what about the idea of uh, to to come to the <coughs> idea of sringar again in uh, gurbani uh the sringar of a sohagan is uh sort of uh used i mean it's it's evoked very very beautifully um the many verses uh, uh, uh one i shared the other day um of guru arjan which is very dear to me it's of a sohagan when is ready and is waiting for the param purk parmeshwara for the final enlightenment the last lesson is the ego about the ego Uh, if i may i can recite it and i would love to understand from you if at all why is it that the idea of the sringar of a sohagan is evoked and what do you think is the difference between other sringar and that of a sohagan and there is a composition of a dohagan that do not be a dohagan but be a sohagan in gurbani and the composition which is just bef- and this is a process there is a two asthis in it a very rare uh, pade uh, this is a chopada but it's a rare one which has two asthis the first one is a plot where uh, the desperation is that i can't even sleep i'm waiting 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 i'm not able to sleep i've lost all my peace all my i'm desperate that's the asthi first and then the first stanza the sanchari is of the gyan the guru comes and gives the final gyan and then the uh, summation happens and then the last again the thir- second asthi comes where the there is a song of attainment have in retrospect that now i have attained uh, i have uh, i have many lal paliya hai so the composition goes like this i won't sing it just recite, recite it for sake of brevity ke mohan neend na aave haave haave is honka bharna sai i'm crying i'm wailing uh, i'm not able to hear you you can you hear me oh, now oh now yes yeah i can hear you now so um and har kajar bastar so har is uh, one could say it's just a necklace singular hai kajar is kajal uh, one could say okay that's one item one asset uh, of the shringa tangible thing but then vastra is generic because it doesn't say which vastra so in yeah. the exegetical attendance which is not written in the books is the uh, har also becomes generic and kajal also becomes generic because vastra is generic yes. so i will now decide mohan neend na aave haave har kajar vastra bharan ki ne udini 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 kab ghar aave ri 
ends with a question mark. First stanza, Saran Sohagan Charan Sees Dhar Lalan Mohe Milavahu Kab Ghar Avari And then the Sanchari comes, Suno Saheri Milan Abhat Kaho Sagaro Ahang Mitavo Tau Ghar Hi Lalan Pavo Tab Ras Mangal Gun Gavahu Anand Roop Dhyavahu Nanak Dwaray Ayo Tau Mai Lalan Payo Ri and then the asthai second comes, ke mohan roop dikhavai, ab mohe need sohavai, meethi pirhe kahani, ab mai sahaj samani, mohan lalan payori. This is the second stage. So this is evoked. Tell us about how is the idea of stringar, or how is the idea of sohagan different than other stringars? What is unique about it? And uh, I'm really curious to understand this. Sphagan um, means, you know, it, in, we have various states of the naikas when we actually do the padams. Mm -hmm. We position the naika in a certain, after reading the poem very, very many times, you realize whether she is young, whether she is an experienced Naika, whether she is a proud of older Naika. So you place the Naika. I think the key is how to read poetry for dance. This has been one of the lessons that I have been doing with my students also now. Because I don't think we spend much time in reading the poetry. What we do is we just take it as a composition and we say, ye, ye pallavi, anu pallavi charana, ho gaya. And uh, we don't sit with the poetry. We don't see the connections. We don't see uh, many, many times, even in a Varnam, which is the main format of a, of a Bharatanatyam recital. I've seen actually, um, you know, delineations as though the four lines are different entities without realizing that it is one poem. You know, it's one poem, and you have to connect uh, the lines. The dancer has to do that. The connections has to be established. So we just had done uh, an exercise where I had taken a mirror and we were just <coughs> made by a poem, and we were just re we, were, we 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 were reading every line ten times, and then reading the first line and the second line ten times, and then like that going and saying which are the lines which are the punch lines what is it that the poet needs to say in this whole thing and which is that line which needs special delineation because that is the crux of the poem that's the that's the line that is the the line that hits you hardest and that's where so i think reading poem is so important when it comes to dance and uh, then the music has to happen and you have to actually brief the musician bring them onto the same platform nowadays i've started making the musician also sit through this okay. these sessions okay. when we read the poem because they many of them are interested and they want to know earlier musicians were not like that they would come do their job and go but today musicians are younger than me fortunately now i don't have to address them as mommy come please come i don't have to do that so they're much younger than me so i can kind of tell them look batho yahan pe aur isko suno ki kis poetry ko kaise padha jata hai aur jab wo wo samajh ke phir gaate hain to mere mere ko lagta hai ki ek ek alag hi flavor aata hai because they have understood they've gone through the process of how you break the lines how you break the words which is the word that is giving you the insight into the poem. Where what is it that giving you? So I think th this is this is what I say process, which is so important before you choose to do a piece or before you choose. So when you say Suhagan, you place her as somebody who's already experienced a certain rasa. Hmm. She's not somebody who's young and who's imagining a certain union. Hmm. This is a Suhagan, so which means she might have already, um, you know, experienced walking together, experiencing together. So when she then becomes a Yachika, it is a different kind of a Yachana. 
to again get that feel because you know the viraha that you mentioned that i am not able to sleep i am because it is because she's already experienced it no in this composition and hence she's missing it yeah uh, no this composition is a different plot it is just before enlightenment with the parampurk parmeshwara yeah. so it is that last stage yeah. that that wedding is it's like the sohagan is now ready before the wedding it is that in this composition it is that plot so it is great please address both of the states yeah yeah experiencing shringara is different from experiencing ecstasy through shringara they are two different things hmm. you know so i think the, the levels are there so yeah. that's why when you say she's a sohagan she 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 she's experienced something but she is yet to experience the that that final effulgence mm. you know that's how i would interpret it i have not read it so many times yeah. i still need to read it right. many many times right. before i can come uh, to that but that's when it is suhagan is she's already bedecked she's bejeweled she's experienced and still is waiting for that last darshan and for that last union mm. So I think it's a beautiful concept. It can be done so beautifully. Yeah. And dance. it is. It is uh, in the sense that, like a, in in a wedding time. I mean, we go back in time uh, where uh, the adornments are all done. Uh, wedding is yet to be. When the sohagan is being readied, the would-be bride, uh, uh, you know, is being readied. And in this, of course, the shringar is of uh, kajal. For example, is to see always the parampurk parmeshwara. The uh, har is to be to have the hari hari har kanthale pehre. Damodar dant de le Guru Nanak himself says. And uh, um, uh, so, like Guru Amar Das says, "E netro mere o hari bin avar na dekho koi." That is the surma, ke jo wo aankhe jo hari ke ilawa kisi aur ko nahi dekhti hain. ए सरुणो मेरे ओ हरि सुन नो पठाए ए ने ए रसना तू अनरस राज रही द श्रृंगार ऑफ द रसना तेरी प्यास न जाए सो uh, so, तू अनरस में पड़ी हर रस uh, जो चाख uh, बुझ गई सगली सो दैट इज द आइडिया ऑफ द श्रृंगार ऑफ द इंटेंजिबल द अलौकिक श्रृंगार इज ऑल द टेंजिबल और द लौकिक श्रृंगार इज बी इवोक्ड as a metaphor as an analogy um, uh, for the alokik sringara for the parampurk parmeshwara so that is where i was just uh, i mean both of them I, i'm sort of hungrier now than i was before because you evoke two different you added one more one is that before the wedding before the enlightenment but the other is that you're already like the composition i was sharing with you in kedara um, sagan he tu aaj hot lal ke avan ki कुछ बूझ फुरकत बाई आग तलवंडी स्कूल मोहम्मद हफीज खां वेन आई वॉज डूइंग रिसर्च ही शेयर दैट विद मी सुन सखी मोरे निस्की बात सुपने में आए पिया खुल गई आंख मोरी आस पास टोले सो दैट इज वन एस्पेक्ट वेद सुहागन यस इज ऑलरेडी ए सुहागन बट इज मिसिंग द लाल दर टू डिफरेंट प्लॉट्स so uh, can you tell us now uh, that that i have sort of basically shared that there are two aspects now which i'm hungry for about can you address both of them there are bahut sare hain like uh, the 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 piece that i just now sang for you in the beginning yeah. which is that uh, which is the parakia where she is married she is a suhagan and she, but she is in love with krishna and she says I that i'm going away with my husband for now but please don't forget me you are my true love i see so you know such interesting um, characters are there such interesting poetry is there and um, uh, when you look at navada with the bhakti the nine ways you see uh, uh, you know him as a sakha as a friend unko dantte bhi ho aap aap unko challenge bhi karte ho fir dasya bhakti bhi hai jaise hanuman jisko bolte hain who is complete surrender and uh, even meera says mane chakar rakho ji mujhe chakar bana ke hi rakh lo apne paas rakh lo lekin so you know there so many different uh, shades to bhakti and bhakti shringara that um, it's mind boggling and the, the kind of pieces we have in um, available in the bhakti time poetry in the south is uh, so vast so vast every conceivable naika that you can imagine is there 
and mostly written by men you know so uh, levels of sensitivity even a uh, uh, you know jaydev the kind of level of sensitivity that you see uh, you also is, you also mentioned about kalidas yes 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 if you see if you, even if you see a simple thing like a ritu samhara how beautifully the whole um, uh, you know imagery that he creates is so sensitive so uh, the naikas if are, are a different topic to to talk about a separate evening or a separate thing because you know uh, i can take out so many examples that where it is yeah. so diverse and so different and um, um, it is uh, also this idea about the das and uh, you know uh, different actors this will be of great interest to me as well uh, we have lot of I'm, gurwani with yes. uh, you know nanak yes. you know das dasan das ki jai you know apne das dasan ko ha das ki sakhyam so these are all uh, different ways of uh, looking at addressing the 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 divine or the naika isht your isht dev so this is uh, it's a unending atha yeah, sagar yeah it is it is now we keep yeah yeah mm, exactly uh, the idea of uh, um, uh, you know uh, you are a singer you've studied and i very fondly remember the dalhousie sunset which i shot which i shot the video i, I tried to find it i couldn't find it last night i was digging through the old files it must be somewhere in a hard drive but it's not on my phone anymore but that was a beautiful sunset and i think you sang kalyan um in the dance today there are musicians but our oldest records are where the dancer would be actually living the song uh jaise bhav batana jisme bolte hain kathak mein jaise maharaj ji is the probably the only one who does that bhav batana pick up one line and expand and i think it is very similar in uh, bharatanatyam but it's still now they're singing they have people singing it no but the original experience of actually hearing the dancer the uh and enacting it how is it can no, you actually, can you illustrate something please for us no actually the point is that um, uh, we move to large spaces you know and amplification become becomes such a big issue when uh, you are a musician and you want to sing and dance it becomes so hard to uh, to do that that's when i think when you try, again again when you see it as as a performance a sleek performance these things don't become these things become obsolete you see these nobody want had space for all this jo easily dispense kar and and isme mehnat jyada lagti hai you can't find uh, singers equally proficient uh, in dance dance equally proficient in music so i think um, earlier it was a must mm. unless you could sing you couldn't yeah. be qualified as a dancer but criteria hi jab badal gaye ha jab criteria hi badal gaye to hamari teachers for example they were musicians who could give concerts three hour music concerts and she knew the veena also she used to play the veena also so i think that kind of level of um, scholarship and understanding and uh, diversity in learning versatility in learning ab uh, us level ka it's all become separate you know yeah. jaise har cheez ka ho gaya hai aapne bai aankh ka specialist dai aankh ka specialist sirf main right kaan dekhta hu baya nahi janta specialist hai yeah. to मेरा विषय आपकी दाई मूछ है बाई नहीं है सो वो एक होलिस्टिक तरीके से जैसे देखते थे दैट 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 सीमलेस क्वालिटी ऑफ ट्रांसलेटिंग एवरी नुआंस ऑफ यू नो म्यूजिक इनटू डांस दैट इज समथिंग दैट इज वेरी रेयर एंड आई डोंट थिंक दैट इज इवन एस्पिरेशनल एनीमोर सो हम लोग ही लेके उसको बैठे हुए हैं कि भाई अभी एक एक हाथ ऐसे करते हो तो दूसरे हाथ में म्यूजिक कैसे जा रहा है उसके हिसाब से आपको चलना पड़ेगा बिकॉज दैट इज अ वेरी टीडियस प्रोसेस द डांसर एंड द म्यूजिशियन हैव टू हैव अ रापो व्हिच इज बिल्ड्स ओवर ओवर इयर्स सो यू हैव बालामा मदर सिंगिंग फॉर हर सो यू नो आई मीन दैट काइंड ऑफ अ रापो of um, and she you had her brother playing the flute or your uncle playing something else so it was a family affair and they lived together and they breathed together and they so it's it's, it's a different era altogether 24/7 process hai na uske churning ka 
exactly exactly or uh, you know having gone through the same training process also having having known the whole thing in the same way so in that is very difficult to get so so the thing is if also when you be, when you talk about these things you also realize that it is not one can translate it in today's concept in, in today's reality you know so you can only tell them that this is how it was and at least be aware of these things and you know these are very valuable tools which can create that's why you find sometimes i hear when i hear bharatanatyam is boring i say yet it is boring it is boring simply because it is uh, it doesn't have the range and variety it used to have mm. every piece has a different approach flavor because musically the flavor was different musically the format was different hence hence the dance changed but today there is a monochromatic approach to it mm. you don't understand the, the the format difference of every piece mm. which comes from music right right so can we can we can you show us something that you sing because it's a gone i mean it, the tradition because okay chak uh, chakna or kehna ki kaisa tha different hai uh, performance mein i understand about the large spaces but it would be fantastic for us to see you illustrate how it used to be ke aap jab gaate the aur abhinay karte the thoda dur kar de aap can we can we push the table away or 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 that's good This is a uh, just one line I'm doing because no two I don't lines. Hear that. No one line. Come on. No. <laughs> <laughs> इसका रस ही अलग है अनुभव अलग है इसका एक्सपीरियंस अलग है आ, लग रहा है कि कुछ सच हो रहा है कुछ सच हो रहा है वा, वा। नहीं, वही है कि 
I think uh, also when I did my research on Haveli Sangeet, it also, I realized that as you said, many of these composers didn't sit and write and all that. Yeah. They had a vision. Yeah. And you know, it, it all just came to them. So these compositions are not, it cannot be treated as, uh, as just mere compositions. You know, they are blessings and they've just come down, you know. So I think they're outpouring sometimes. You know, their cries sometimes. So, so one has to understand the context and one has to understand all that, the way and why it was written and why it is sung the way it is sung or why it, it is interpreted the way it is interpreted. So that's why I said you can't paint the brush. Oh, bhakti period, bhakti time. Okay, brush, take out the bhakti brush and paint it. It's not like that, you know. So, in, whenever you take a, a poet, I think it, you have to really understand the essence and you have to... Um, now, that, that beautiful composition, you know, which is, which is so playful and it is sung in the Aveli Sangeet tradition. Everything about him is Teda. Mm. These are compositions that have been sung and um, so you make fun of the Lord and that's what it is. Sometimes they are laughing with him, sometimes they are laughing with him, sometimes they are laughing with him. So you know this kind of thing of, uh, as you rightly said, this is not just, uh, just um, uh, you know, poetry that is very pondered and on a table written. You know, vision, you know. So I think we need to yeah. really respect this heritage. Yeah. So, um, I, we can go on, I can go on. You started a new aspect now. I'm like maybe a million questions wanting to pour out. Um, uh, how do you respond to uh, percussion. Uh, have you have you looked at the northern Indian percussion as well? Uh, no, I have limited myself to Mritangam and Ghatam. We've used Ghatam and of course Tavil we've used also. Uh -huh. uh, so these are uh, very powerful, um, uh, you know, percussion instruments. Mm -hmm. And I am very much against the the artificial uh, key. Whatever, whatever that's called, the pad. Oh, um, yeah. Pray, whatever. All sounds. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I see that all the time being used in right. dance, but I find the authentic timber of a particular instrument, whether it's a ganjira or the ghatam or the vardangam or the tavil, I've used all these and I feel it's very important to use original instruments. Mm. But there's, of course, positive funds because you can't yeah. have so many fashion instruments in a recording or in a live show. Live show is a nightmare because you can't have so many, balancing so many uh, mics with so many people and their fragile egos of wanting to, you know, sound loud. Yeah. So, so I think uh, the beauty of the instrument is when it is heard in its own uh, <clears throat> beautiful environment without amplification and without all that. So I think these the, the south south percussion instruments are amazing. Even the uh, uh, simple uh, 
uh, morsing it's so effective at times when you use it sparingly for a production mm. so yes we use all these uh, percussion instruments and um, try to use it judiciously because uh, these all have a place mm -hmm. kuch kare thoda sa gao as you wanted me to shall we do it or hai mizaz i think मैं थोड़ी सी थक भी गई हूँ थक गए हो तो थके हुए गा दो ना पता लगेगा कि अभी तक तो पता ही नहीं लगा कि डीली भी हो तुम <laughs> so, अभिनय का अभिनय का हिस्सा होगा डां डां ओह डां डां यू नो मे बी मे बी थिंक व्यूअर्स वुड बी बॉर्ड इफ वी वी जस्ट बीन गोइंग ऑन एंड ऑन एंड ऑन नो नो दिस इज यू नो द सीरीज हैज अ डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ व्यूअरशिप इट इज from an academic perspective i think it has a longer shelf life this is not Absolutely. yeah so i think we are not just talking to the ones who are friends prerna shrimali ji was here swarmalaya ganesh is here firoz khan mangnyar is here you know uh, uh, of course manjidi ji ka maine zikr kiya hi hai many many friends have uh, uh, joined rita chenni from italy she is a journalist who uh, was there now caught up there but she lives out of delhi I'm sure. And many of your students. Bored, very very bored. With oh no no, no, no. Oh, I'll learn longa. Bored, I'm. So I'll learn longa. Or maybe you're Any bored questions? of my singing. Yeah. Questions? Pardon? No, no. Take questions also. Are there questions? Yeah, I, I, I have not. Any. Yeah, I have not seen questions yet. Um, the, the ones I think initially they were there. Uh, I did not ask people to ask questions. But people, yes. Why oh. not? Uh, Radhika uh, Joseon is joining from Jersey City she's a dancer too so friends uh, uh, well they're telling no we are not bored manjeet kaur writes uh, firoz khan say pranam but people if you have questions even if you know her uh, or if you've been if you face her ayer as a teacher you're welcome to <laughs> to share masala laga ke main aage bataunga usko <laughs> and um uh, there are many many um, you know wonderful wonderful uh, compliments of course that i won't uh, flatter you ne to kal ko mere se baat kar di band kar doge keh rahe main to dekho sab chalta and um, there is one balvinder pal singh says very happy to see your cultural dynamics it is like national integration project where poison of communalism has no place <laughs> that's very interesting observation <laughs> और मंजरी जी हाँ कह रहे हैं गीता का नजरिया ने आज तो पिया का काम तमाम कर दिया होगा ब्यूटीफुल अभिनय आप पिया को कुछ भी बताऊंगी <laughs> Our Seema Bhalla, of course, writes uh, beautiful love the nazakat and bhav, and Ramni Kaur, my cousin, she writes mind, body, and soul oneness, fantastic. She says, um, and Rita Chenni, the journalist, she said no words, but she's telling us an intriguing story. Uh, that was early on. Uh, or flatter karo, koi vava bhi batao. Okay. and um, uh yeah so there there are i think uh, plenty uh, so abhi bas kare ya kuch karna hai thak gaye ho to rehne dete hain rehne dena abhi ha but i think uh, that was a fantastic i i love the last two um uh illustrations that you did i miss them i mean i uh, uh, i would if the wish list i have is to have uh, dancers in the future Uh, the immediate next generation i mean those who are benefiting from learning from elders responsible attendees like you um that they should aspire to do that i think both are important uh to have in big concert spaces to have that but i'm reminded of our very dear friend parvati baul i mean there's now technology that people are able to uh, have uh, uh amplification very light and very um, you know not very sort of uh, okay. yeah it's it's very minimal and uh, very effective uh, where um, i would love to see in the future near future uh, where some of the finest exponents who are uh, uh, adept you know at uh, 
Uh, I am reminded of YG Srilatha Nikshitha. You know, I recently got acquainted with her, uh, Neela Ramkopal's uh, student, who's like you. You know, your mom, you, you're telling about who's someone who's also learning the Veena, for example, and uh, studies dance and singing as well. I think that will be fantastic, a gift from all of you elders, and me included, in the sense that people who are attending to our custodians of different knowledge streams to not to think that, not to, not to take that era as if it's gone or it's dispensable. Because it's, there's something unique that the uh, protagonist on stage receives and is able to give, therefore, is able to churn and distribute. And as us as Rasika sitting in the audience are able to savor something different, which a contemporary idea of performance is not able to, uh, uh, you know, give us something, endow us I with think, it. Uh, I think that, that comes out of uh, your, your being very sensitive to this. No? Uh, the yes. point is that we've killed that sensitivity to, to a degree where everything is so performance oriented that this sensitivity of um, giving space to others, other experiences, for example, you have to be open to, to enjoying other experiences. If you keep yourself very monochromatic in your vision as this is what arts is, this is how dance should be, then that is very dangerous. You know, so openness and willingness to experience is one great quality which needs to be nurtured from childhood to be able to open your doors, open your heart to receive something beautiful. So I think that is the sense of aesthetic that you need to develop from childhood. Aesthetic of sound, aesthetic of appearance, aesthetic of, of visual experience. Mm -hmm. And that's why I feel we created a studio which brings in all these experiences in terms of shape, form, color, where children just be in that environment and imbibe. Mm. I think beauty cannot be, you know, you can't teach it. You have to, 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 to learn to just imbibe and to grow in it. So I think these are things that we don't think it to be important at education tools, at something that the education system, it, it, it's a byproduct, should be a byproduct of education, but it's not. Mm. So I think the arts become a very important aspect through which you can bring in these beautiful uh, concepts into life, which otherwise becomes extremely stressful and extremely negative. Mm. Uh, there is one. Oh. Yes, go ahead, please. No. Uh, there is one thing, though, I will uh, I will read a text and maybe you can do Abhinay on that. Can you kindly do that? Like one last thing, like Ra's request yes. from me. Oi, wala. No, no, no. This is something else. Uh, but you will not squeak, you will not shout, you will not puke, you will not scowl. Those rasas are forbidden. <laughs> okay. <coughs> and of course, uh, Swarnamale again, Swarnamale says, what an interesting confluence of metaphysics in the form of questions. And I, oh, that's... Thank you very much. And ideas of form through dance. I will take a little bit of a little bit. Suprabha Mishra uh, is writing. It's, a, it's really a feast for all of us. Thanks to both of you, Pranam. And Poonam Ayub writes, uh, would be an absolute delight to behold a live stage performance of Bharat Natyam by Geeta Chandran, especially seeing that palpable liveliness in her persona. Uh, and journalist Rita Chenney says, waiting for you live on a stage. And so the text goes like this. Ready? Yeah. Geeta Chandran is a leading exponent of Bharat Natyam and Karnatak vocal music. Her training as an Indian classical dancer began at age five under Srimati Swarna Saraswati of the Tanjavur Dasi Parampara. Today, she's... <laughs> <laughs> she is not only a sought-after performer, but also a cultural ambassador, serving as founding president of the Natavriksha Dance Company in New Delhi. Chandran writes a dance column for the New Indian Express and Sunday Standard, and is the author 
of so many journeys, an autobiographical account of her experiences with dance, social <laughs> activism with a particular focus on gender equality, oops, runs through her public engagement. Chandran is a recipient of the Padma Shri, <laughs> Sangeet Natak Academy Award, many tha committee mein. <laughs> and Tagore National Fellowship for Cultural Research. My goodness, it reminds me of those five years. Can you imagine? I <laughs> none of us wanted to go back, isn't it? <laughs> we had to... <laughs> but it was extraordinary. Anyway, but you hardly, matlab, you said you will do Abhinay. You were just shooting me. That's it. That was part of Abhinay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that was that was I um, you know I am affected <laughs> that you are unwell okay <laughs> let me tell you that it came as a shocker and I didn't want to hear it uh, because I have you know Mauritius friend and others who are fighting in the front line in North Italy uh, we've heard people and many other friends uh, who've had uh, that cuff, you know, became familiar. And uh, uh, I, on behalf of everyone at, at the Anad Foundation and, and uh, my family, friends uh, who've spoken about it, who've been, uh, who've, who, who are moved by, uh, you know, what all, all that you've written. And uh, we all wish you uh, a very, very speedy recovery and lots of, lots of love uh, and you. prayers. Thank you so and much. you're beautiful and I hope that you continue being, I've never felt being so the same. Loved than in the last few days because I've been inundated with so many people who've been so wonderful and uh, right from my school teachers who called me and asked me how I was and how they were praying. and. Uh, I think it's a reaffirmation of love, of respect, and of faith in prayers. And um, it's been very, very, very uh, humbling to see how many people just love you and care for you. And um, you mean so much to so many people. I mean, you've touched so many hearts. And, and I think that is very, very special for me. And uh, I think uh, it's just been very, very lovely. To be feel so loved. And how is, are you now a discarded entity at home? Uh, nobody, uh, everybody's angry. How dare you? How did you get angry? Are they taking care of you? Are you are you being pampered at home? Yes, uh, I mean I, I'm in isolation. So uh, fortunately, the house is a little large, so I can uh -huh. be in the first floor and not really disturb anybody else. So yes, it's. Uh, I think. Uh, you know, in the in the lockdown, you'd learn to be with yourself. And this is even further shrinking and going inwards. Mm -hmm. So it's nice. It's nice. Lots of music, lots of chanting, um, and lots of uh, thinking about others and thinking about how blessed you are in life and how privileged you are. And God has been so kind that uh, sometimes you forget it. Maybe these are moments when. He wants you to remember that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I would. I have a request for you. Uh, in fact, uh, you mentioned about what all music you've been listening, right? And that you're reading. Uh, of course, writing when you do, you write columns and all that. They get public anyway. It'll be great if you can start sharing uh, what you're listening and you're reading. It'll be wonderful to to uh, for all of us. In fact, the music that you're mentioning on your posts or even in the uh, yeah, for all in this column as well in the comments, it'll be fantastic yes. to also keep up I'll with something. Yeah. You you're already doing yes. that, or you you're, you're no, I can share it. There's no problem. That will be wonderful. Have, uh, yeah. Yes, whatever I, interesting I come across, I can always share it, and that would be wonderful mm. too. I think that will be very I nice. Yeah. The, uh, that's why I feel you know, um, on one side you hear that uh, you know the funding for the arts is being axed. On the other side, you hear all, almost everybody from initiated, uninitiated, everybody is saying what has seen us through this lockdown is music, is dance, is, is uh, you know, discourse, 
is uh, listening to artists so i mean this is such a disconnect if you don't have the artists and if they their kitchen fires don't burn how are you going to sustain how are you going to have this wonderful resource that's just as a click of a button just for the asking what then is and a nation what then is a civilization exactly so i think it's time we all collectively pondered and thought and uh, took care of the arts and the artists I I was uh, moved by when I was in lockdown in Italy for 72 days Angela Merkel you know 150 billion dollars for yes. arts and culture and crafts I mean and uh, I, our nation should be say that again That's I can't hear you the most tangible and this is the most fragile yeah, yeah. she realized yes. that and she said save this first yeah focus on uh, underscore the intangible assets and heritage yeah and i think we really need to look at that so many musicians especially the smaller you know uh, fish within that if i may uh, the underserved musicians if i may uh, the underprivileged musicians and artists across the nation if i may are the ones who are doing now sim- you know simple labor petty labor i don't want to use the term petty labor because there's nothing labor is not petty it is they're doing hard labor uh yeah. to make ends meet and i sometimes i no I, particularly the nadaswara vidwans can you say that nadaswara again nadaswara vidwans etc they only used the nadaswara vidwans they used to only uh, play in the temples and at weddings and yeah. both temple both. festivals yeah. and weddings are gone so uh, it's it's been very difficult and i have heard many of my friends in the south really reach out to them and help them out but how long you see the artist community can support each other for some time yeah. but not uh, on a regular basis and we really don't know how long this is going to last so uh, i i think it's you know patronage has to come on a continuous basis and sustain them and you know give them that uh, courage to get over this period so i think uh, government intervention will have to happen yeah. at some point or the other uh before these people many of them are on, almost committing suicide yes. we heard that as well so so i think it's 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 it's, it's really a bad yeah. uh, time for music i hope the, uh, the policy writers the bureaucrats they are able to formal i think a policy intervention may be needed a special whatever you know permission or whatever order needs to be maybe we should all put together something i'm you know let's grab a pens and formulate a small policy note that uh, allows you know that suggests uh, a way for the government because the key would be how much money is needed how do you quantify how much money is required how many artists are there the key would not be just how, to look at the privileged ones how do you look at the smaller people the is the how to disperse it yes, who qualifies as an art who do you know yeah in problem in our society so let's uh, maybe i don't know that could be one outcome of our conversation where we can maybe put together a small uh, group of people who can formulate and maybe let the government decide not decide reject it accept it but i think if we some of us can put together uh, get together virtually and start having a uh, uh, you know meetings of 8 10 8 9 10 of them we don't have to be 500 people but just 8 9 10 no. people uh, who are who are uh, who have written in the past you know we we wrote our 2020 policies respectively mine was for the music part i ended up scribbling uh, 10 12 years ago 2020 thing for the sna i think some of us can get together and uh, uh, you know ramaj you know uh, or put together script something and then um, uh, give it to the government for consideration and they can add subtract whatever they want but the key would be how do you how do you count people it's it's a nightmare so many freelancers out there how do you quantify them how do you give them remember it's a, it's a it's not easy the thought has already it's it's the it's the it's the zonal cultural centers who have some kind of a listing of uh, artists etc so i think uh, they are the ones who have been told or uh, they are they are the ones who already uh, writing uh, to the government and giving the names or whatever so i think yeah there's something already happening and we need to see that it's expedited and scaled up but it's again you know uh, because our exp- you know we've been in the uh, Punj- i've been in the punjab arts council uh, punjab sangeet nar academy and um, other institutions been in the universities and others as well and the sna 
the people in the um, uh, in the mailing list of all of these agencies have worked closely with the during the guru gaurav or the guru Na, guru gobind singh's 350th birth anniversary the nodal body that i worked with was the bihar sangeet nadak academy uh, all the expenditure was done by the government of bihar through them i curated the major festival a six day festival 65 hours of music dance theater uh, shekhar da also came many people uh, came dr umayal puram subaraman sivaraman came i am in fact conversing with him tomorrow uh, he'll be he's very kindly consented to uh, spend an hour with me tomorrow um all of these elders came I've, i saw how limited the uh, ambit is and how if i may um you know there's a soft corruption as well in the sense of who are the names who will make the list and so on and so forth i would fear that i hope it is just a list without any biases and uh, uh, favoritism in that sense if if there's a less uh, there's a meager amount there'll be a problem but then beyond these mailing lists there are people who serve like you mentioned people who uh, you know depended on the temples who are freelancers and they are uh, more, mostly affected as well uh, how do we quantify them that's i have grappled with this idea for the last two months uh, i don't know how to find a solution how do you uh, script a policy for that of course because if we you all need to maybe think say that again please see how we need to collectively put our heads together and see how we can because it's a very tough call because india is so vast and who is the truly needy and who is the one who's actually in need we really cannot tell sitting in one corner yeah. so you know it's very hard it's, it's it's a task that needs to be taken up very seriously yeah. and uh, and urgently isn't it yeah. thank you so much geeta thank you i as i said i can go on <laughs> there's so much but i really i'm grateful that you took time out accepted i had called you the other day telling uh, hoping that i'll tell you well you know let's let's delay it etc etc but i was well i wasn't really surprised kuri kuri can the daddy hai the tough guy <laughs> ਕਰੇ ਵਾਇਰਸ ਆ ਵਾਇਰ ਚੱਕ ਦੇ ਫਟੇ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਵਾਇਰਸ ਆਵੇ ਸ਼ਾਇਰਸ ਆਵੇ ਕੋਈ ਨਹੀਂ ਜੋ ਮਰਜੀ ਆਵੇ ਜੋ ਜੀ ਆਏ ਸੋ ਥੈਂਕ ਹਾਂ ਜੀ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਸੋ ਮਚ ਆਈ ਥਿੰਕ ਆਈ ਫਰਗੋਟ ਆਲ ਏਵਰੀਥਿੰਗ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਮਾਈ ਇਲਨੈਸ ਐਂਡ ਆਈ ਜਸਟ ਵਾਸ ਵਿਦ ਵੈਨ ਵੈਨ ਯੂ ਆਰ ਟਾਕਿੰਗ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਡਾਂਸ ਐਂਡ 뮤직 ਨਥਿੰਗ ਯੂ ਜਸਟ ਫਰਗੇਟ ਏਵਰੀਥਿੰਗ ਸੋ ਇਟਸ ਬੀਨ ਵੈਰੀ ਸਪੈਸ਼ਲ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਸੋ ਮਚ ਐਂਡ ਯੂ ਟੇਕ ਕੇਅਰ ਐਂਡ ਕੰਟੀਨਿਊ ਯੋਰ ਵੰਡਰਫੁਲ ਵਰਕ and um, yes we shall collaborate on some of the compositions which you had promised me so many years back and you've never ever done it so you know shanta ji hold you to it always remembering shanta, shanta. sarab ji she okay. wanted us to do yeah plenty yes we 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 must plan that yeah we can we can maybe let's let's yeah let's start thinking about something yeah <laughs> and maybe one of these Thank days uh, we'll um, uh, extend the 70th mela because i'm doing sometimes uh, extended sessions the 70b <laughs> would come knocking me in a few a few days and we'll check upon how you're doing <laughs> thank you thank you so much thank you so thank much you. geeta thank means you. a lot and love to everyone at home and thank them from all of us for taking care of you thank Namaskar. you thank you bye thank you <laughs> friends this is my conversation with uh, vidushi uh, sir geeta chandran um i hope you all enjoyed it as i, as I mentioned that she tested um covid positive uh, covid 19 positive a few days back and uh, she's uh, just extraordinary and i you would have seen it isn't it uh tomorrow i have uh, uh two betaks um one is tomorrow is saturday actually yes it is saturday so let's see um i am well we have one of the greatest exponents as i mentioned earlier um uh, with one dr umayal puram um uh, sivaraman uh is going to be joining me tomorrow from 5 to 6 pm um here he is this was a photo i shot on the 20th of uh, november um in 2018 this was in amritsar and um 
he is uh, a direct uh, lineage, uh, student lineage from Santiago Raja. Um, believe you me, he is just extraordinary. And, um, and then after that, uh, I'll be, after my virtual travel to Chennai, I'll be going to, or we'll all go, um, to Italy, to Rome. And let me see which image shall I show you. Um, <laughs> I can show all of them. There are three, three posters, maybe this one. Um, this is uh, Roberto Proceda, he is a pianist. Um, and we'll go to Rome after that. We'll listen to some piano and he's had a fantastic, fantastic career. He's also created a new software. He's part of the. He's a co co producer. You know, they've, they've, he's part of the company that has uh, produced uh, a new software which is dedicated to one-to-one -one teaching or class. It's called My Classroom, and I'll get to ask uh, him about that as well. I, in fact, tested that last Saturday, uh, Sunday. In fact, my 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 virtual uh, class on uh, Zoom, which I used to do, you do, all my students gathering from across the continents, from the North Americas, Europe, here, and uh, Australia, and so on and so forth, and we tried that. It was quite interesting. It was very dedicated to very high quality uh, work. It's dedicated on the audio, uh, and I'll be in conversation with him tomorrow from 7.30 p.m. onwards. Um, so I hope to see you tomorrow, uh, with, first with Dr. Omialpuram Sivaraman, he is a grand elder of our nation, and I have simply loved his work. And I'm looking forward uh, to be in conversation with him and learning about his work, uh, how he sees the idea of rhythm, the layer, and the tala. Uh, he's a prolific composer, an extraordinary player. And uh, I miss my elders when I see him. Uh, I miss them no more. Uh, I see them, I see their presence as well. So he's beautiful and I'll uh, look forward to uh, being in conversation with him, uh, with you all in attendance. Satkartar, Varujika Khalsa, Varujika Fateh, Inamaskar, Khuda Hafiz, and a very good night.